Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spawncast episode 143, the final Spawncast of 2019, actually. As, the decade, uh, of the decade. Of the de- oh, of the decade. Yeah. Good point. Wow. I forgot about that. Yeah. That is true. Of the decade. Yep. So next time we'll be on uh, on air next week. It'll be uh, we'll be in we'll be in 2020, which will be hopefully an exciting year for uh for games but uh, i brought some people along today we, we are missing sean he's he's doing some. i don't know what sean's doing he's doing something <laughs> sean's out doing something right now uh and then uh max as well but um we do have a, a guest tonight that's review tech rich how's it going tonight man it's it is lovely how's it going great great thanks for joining us tonight we appreciate it appreciate it uh and then we have mvg of course what's going on well, man how's it going I'm, I'm doing well man thank you for having me on the show good to have you oh, i like the genesis shirt very nice thank very you nice. thank you yeah, christmas christmas gift oh okay nice. good stuff good stuff good yeah. stuff and then we have uh evan what's going on man oh, not much just you know picked up a new car today so kind of new car oh, yeah no big deal uh, weird flex yeah. no, <laughs> no big deal just went by the dealership picked it up just know. bought a car today it's all good <laughs> ran past the tesla dealership no problem what happened to the old car i think finally die no it's still going this is getting oh, he has two cars time to upgrade. Got, bored. got it got it time to upgrade all right very nice very nice <laughs> uh then nate nate i think is here but he's muted right now yep still so, muted okay Sucks. he's just muted all right well he's here and then he's not here we you know what he could be here this whole time we'd never know <laughs> um, yeah, that guy that guy needs to get a webcam already oh well all right moving on jordan <laughs> how's it going man hi going good good to be going here good. going good everyone, everyone liked the the video for the star wars we did yeah maybe maybe we should do more off maybe should we maybe if maybe. people want it hey man the boys the boys season two you know i mean it's gonna it's happen coming it's coming up next year right we got cobra kai next year too that one's the first one that's oh that's like an april time right Tell, yeah yeah telling you man 2020 is looking good 2020 is looking good. good. Very nice. And then we have uh, Miss Click. Hi. How's it going? It's going great. How about you? That's good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. good. Uh, how, uh, first off, how was everyone's holiday this week? How'd it go? <sighs> it was good, man. I, I, had a good, I had a good break. Had a That's good break. Good. Yeah. That's good to hear. I just That's worked out a lot. Yes. Got a ring fit? I got a ring fit. Look at you. I got a ring fit. I was doing it on the treadmill on the streams. And uh, this is a real workout. I endorse this. This thing is legit. I, I, I fully recommend this. When did you get when did you get Ring Fit? When did you get that? I got it uh, Monday or Tuesday. I think I got it Tuesday. Because they said there's enough content there to play, I think, for like two and a half months or something. If you play it's like insane. an yeah. hour a day or something like that. Well, so on the treadmill, I can't do adventure mode because Wait, you're, the, you're doing this on the you're doing ring fit on the treadmill yeah, yeah so i have uh, I, I, I curated <laughs> a workout because you can go right away to making like a workout regimen so mm-hmm. i have like a lot of arm workouts and arm based games and stretches and all that in there and like each set takes a bit to do it and it's and it's perfect like i'm loving it and it's uh it's, it's legit like you feel a burn like it's it's working so that's interesting. Nintendo's hmm, always been about the exercise products, though. They've they've always pumped them out. Uh, this so. is what I wish, like, what we Fit could have been back in the day. Like, we Fit, really, when you look at it, it's just a balance board. You just do things around it. This actually gives you an incentive because there's a full game going on on the screen. It gives you more upper you, body resistance, too. I mean, yeah. It's my it's, worst. Like, you think about, like, oh, I could just squish in and pull out a, you know, a circle. But, like, there's, it vibrates and has resistance and, like, it, mm-hmm. it's legit. So, I, I recommend okay. it. Okay. It's worth all that with with the one joy con on the on the what on what on your leg yeah your leg. Hmm. tracks your heart rate and everything yeah, yeah that's pretty good through the uh through the um through the ring it does yeah. tracks yeah. calories that you wow. lose as well and it's awesome hmm. interesting yeah i never i didn't check it out or anything but uh it's good to hear that there's a full game there jordan i can't that's... believe there's no spawn wave video on this yet yeah <laughs> you yeah, you who asked me to get it? I don't. There's no. There's no screws on the back of that ring, are there? Is there? <laughs> you gotta cut it open. Oh, if you can't oh, take it apart, gosh. no, it's nothing. I'd have to cut it open. I think it's like a, hammer out. a hammer or a knife or something. I probably cut yeah, it open. Um, uh, I bet you I cut it open. There's like nothing there. It's just, no, it's just a ring. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's fine. That's fine. What about MVG? What you been playing, man? What'd you play this week? Uh, I actually been playing Judgment. The uh... you know what? I almost started that this week. I thought about. It. I looked at it and I said uh i don't i don't know i played another game but but what do you think of judgment i like it i um i i gotta be honest so the two games that i played this week were so it's all backlog at the moment i'm trying to clear yeah. clear through the Same. through the list before obviously you know things start up again but 
I started playing, uh, well, I picked up playing uh, Outer Worlds, and i got to be honest, I just kind of got bored of the game. I just, really? I, just I think I'm almost done it. that game. I think I'm almost done it, and it really depends on if you were into the old school, like, well, not really old school, but like Fallout 3, yeah. you know? I, 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 I think it's closer to 3 than New Vegas, I think. I, I think... Yeah. I think all the things that bug me about those styles of games mm -hmm. is present in Outer Worlds, and I just, I don't know, I just kind of got bored of playing it. I may go back and, and revisit a bit. I just wasn't feeling it. So I picked up and started playing Judgment. I know Max was really big on on the game, and I like the Yakuza games, but I know they're a, a massive time investment. They're, they're like 30-hour <laughs> yeah, yeah. experiences, right? Those cutscenes are long, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, but I, I'm, what can I say, man? I'm like three chapters in. I'm hooked, so i got to see where the story goes. It's a great, it's a good game. I like it a lot. Okay, okay. Yeah. Good story so far in yeah, the beginning? Yeah, it I kicks like it. off quick. Okay. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's, it's kind of set in the same universe, but it's not a Yakuza game. It's different characters and a different story. So I thought it was a, a, a good way to kind of get introduced to those styles of games without really knowing which Yakuza game to play first because yes, there's so exactly. many of them. And Yakuza 0 is not necessarily the one you're supposed to start with. So <laughs> I feel like, you know, if you want to start playing those styles of games, check out Judgment because it, it's really good. Really yeah, I have game. all these Yakuza games. And I, like you said, I don't know which one to start first, but the idea yeah. of just like Judgment, that's why it was really interesting for me. So maybe I will start that up to see. You should but check it out. Yeah, well, it's, I was playing fun. I was playing Halo Reach, of course, on the PC. Switch between that. Me too. And then I played an obscene amount of Need for Speed Heat. I oh, am yeah. like, I'm trying to get through this game right now uh, to get done with it, but I and I keep playing it. I I actually have liked it more since I've been playing it, but I've also been kind of annoyed. I think it's the day night cycle having to go between. Yeah. I don't know if I don't know if the real time would I don't know if a real time like day night cycle would be any better. I almost feel like if they just got rid of it completely, I'd be like, if it was just always nighttime or something, I'd be fine. Like underground was like always nighttime. If I yeah. remember right. Uh, and I was fine with that. Um, I, I still have the game on deck. Um, once I wrap up either uh, judgment or out of worlds, whichever comes first, I'll, um, I'll, I'll pick it up and stop playing it. It's a longer game still. Like I, I, I spent a lot of time in it. I'm, I'm getting like some really nice cars now and it's like, Oh, you complete a chapter two. So I don't know how many chapters in this thing, but I spent a lot of time getting a bunch of money and rep together and I'm getting like exotic cars and I'm racing against terrible cars. Uh, so maybe I went ahead a little too far, but it's like, I mean, you can drive around and do whatever you want, basically. Like you can find stuff and um, that was uh, that was good. And then I played a lot of uh, Halo Reach outside of that on the PC just because it's Halo Reach. I mean, I I'm ready for next year for Halo 3. Apparently they're doing all the Halos next year. Yep. I can't yep. believe it. Yeah, so we're just we're gonna get all of them next year. I'm I'm jumping on Halo Three immediately. Halo, 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 Halo in all in sequence, so you're gonna have to yeah. wait a little bit. I mean, I'm okay with Halo One. I'll I'll jump. I'll do some Blood Gulch. We'll do that. We'll do some Blood Gulch, uh, and I'm I'm there for that. Uh, I've had no issues with Halo Reach on the PC too. I've heard people saying they're having stuttering issues. I never had them from the get go. There, I think the, the trick is to keep your VSync on and leave it locked at sixty. Apparently, if it if it's high, if it's it uncapped, um, there's kind of you know micro stutters and things like that. I think Digital Foundry did a pretty good 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 kind of analysis on it, which explained why it's best to just keep it VSync on. There was also okay. some weird. Okay, there was sense. some weird uh stuff going on where if you had i think it was it was weird it was like logitech gaming program or razors uh chromatic uh whatever their program is called apparently that was doing some weird hiccups with halo reach and they patched it semi-recently but that was another reason people were getting these stuttering issues was because of like those programs strangely um but man it's smooth it's smooth on pc so i'm still i'm still playing it and uh it's it's interesting because it's a lot different now than it was then because everyone that you're playing at like lower levels in competitive play they're all good as well so it's not like before where i jump in and there were a lot of really bad people at low levels it's just everyone's just good yeah so and, and it looks significantly better even on pc than it does on the x too i'm noticing more pie i tried the x version when i was reviewing this tv i noticed more pop in on the x than i do on the mm -hmm. pc version which surprised me because it's such an old game you think the x would be able to handle it no problem yeah there was i think reach was the game that they were having a hard time with the original xbox they said they were running out of memory or something thing uh and that's why it was delayed like the original xbox, xbox one the vcr one. yeah was having a hard time uh, with it around the x with uh extra ram had no problem with it but it, that's what it held them up um which is interesting like you're saying it's a 360 game yeah you would think the original <laughs> xbox you know they would be able even the x original xbox one would be able to handle it but you do notice though there's a lot more popping than on the pc mm. version even on the x so interesting i wonder if maybe the series x will solve that We'll see. It should be compatible. 
Um, what about oh Evan? Yeah, Evan, what, you, what were you playing this week? My buddies got to? back into For the King, so I started playing that heavily. It's a pretty good. It's like a tabletop simulation style thing, but on PC with a lot of PC based elements, a little bit of RPG fighting. It's a good three player co op game. Okay. Okay. What uh, anything else, or was that mostly it? Mostly. Don't it. sleep. Don't sleep on Call of War as Gunslinger for the Switch. That's an excellent first person shooter, and I have a feeling oh. it's going to get overlooked. Gun, uh, that was on um that was on 360 right that, that was, was on the 360 I, play that? I played it on 360 i played on 360 back then and i i have seen it on the switch a couple times pop up uh on the eShop. i have not checked it out though it's uh you said it's pretty good yeah it's such a good fps yeah. it's my favorite call of war is in the series to be honest with you okay okay but like i mean like it plays it plays well on the switch because i played it on the 360 i remember i liked it this is a while it, it's ago. 30 fps but it seems like it's a solid 30 fps it plays fine as far as i've played it so far Okay, yeah, that one was that was a good Call of Wars game because before they did some weird stuff. I think they brought it they brought it into like modern, modern. times. Oh, oh so bad. Bad. <laughs> you know, dude, cartel. The people were not happy with that. And then they went back with the with with uh, Gunslinger and everyone was like, all right, good. Finally went back to you know Western. Uh so that one that one was good though. Gunslinger was good. It just came out at a weird time because it was like it came out when we were all talking about the next gen systems. Yeah, it came out late. It was 2013, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I remember people were talking about that and like the Xbox One, and I was like, okay, I guess I'll get it. Um, but I think I rented it and played it over a weekend at the time. What about Miss Click? We've been we've been streaming. Is it Pokemon again? No, uh, I mean Overwatch. we no, we didn't really. Sh I didn't get to stream this much because we were. I was taking time with family, but uh, we did some charity stuff for Ring Fit. So that's pretty much what we did uh and almost died and then i i recently got back into overwatch so kind of that's been overwatch fun on, on yeah. pc ps4 PC. Okay. Yeah, okay yeah yeah um but they gave us like a bundle for the stuff so we were doing giveaways for that but yeah i got back in with the old crew so we've been playing that so it's been fun to get back into nice. a uh, pc shooter you guys rolling into overwatch uh two when that comes out uh yeah i'm pretty excited regardless of what it ends up being or not being <laughs> i at least just want new things at this point oh, so. okay yeah. very nice nate you back yet still Nate's still gone okay he's yeah still gone. i'm here <laughs> <laughs> nate nate's nate's gone <laughs> Shut uh, up, <laughs> now he's here <laughs> uh, that's, that's the next fun. piece of merch for nate to hate <laughs> yeah Hey man, his 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 piece of merch now is really good. The one you got I on. I mean, it's yeah, not good. bad. It was limited it's time, man. He's limited got a time. A, he still needs to post time. another video, though. He's been he's been kind of slacking on his video there. He's slacking, man. What happened? He's been such a hard worker. MVG put out two videos in one week the other day. Uh, yeah, yeah day. that's Woo! unprecedented. That's like, huh? Seventy five percent more value. That's crazy. Yeah, Nate, Nate's over here can't figure out someone to hate for ten minutes. Oh <laughs> 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 uh, man, uh, let's. Uh, is, that, is that everything though? All the games we played this past week. Anything else? Oh, they, up? Made me Nate play Skate it. Three for like a day after. We I mean, everyone played. I mean, yeah, of course we played Skate Three. That's 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 a that's a I holiday. Did a whole stream with it. I couldn't I couldn't put it down for like yeah. a whole day. That's a that's a good a good game. Great. Game. Uh, <laughs> the PS. Uh, we'll we'll actually jump into some of the topics here. Uh, it's been this past week. It was kind of slower for news because everyone was out of office. Like no one was really around wow. for a lot of these companies press releases and stuff so it was a little slower but uh but there was there was still some stuff that we can go over mostly uh because we had an interesting little it was a little bit of news that kind of got pushed out there for the ps5 uh specifically around its capabilities and what people are believing it to be which is weaker than the, the xbox series x and this is specifically talking about teraflops uh i know we, we talked about it rich before we went on air mvg i know you know all about this as well uh mm -hmm. nate does too the ps5 according to uh, a listing of tests that amd was doing internally places the chip at least one of the chips which by the way they're naming these chips after moons uh for uranus this is oberon and ariel and those are two moons uh there it's uh 9.2 teraflops which actually puts it 25 percent weaker than the xbox series x and now this is kind of putting people all over the place wondering if the ps5 will actually try to be a 400 hundred dollar system versus a five or potentially 600 hundred dollar xbox series x you guys think that's a better strategy than to try to match it in power 
I, I don't know. I mean, that puts it in line kind of, like, I think, with like a 2070 Super. I think it has a, a similar amount of compute performance. It's uh Yeah, that uh, that 9.2 puts it right at just about. I think the 5700 XT is a little more powerful, like by like 5% or something, basically right there. Here's what it's all going to come down to. It's going to come down to what games the systems have at launch. And price is going to, yeah, hey, if they're going to be able to launch a system at 400 bucks, that'll be appealing. But I'm also hearing that the launch for the PS5 is going to be fairly dry. And if the Xbox Series X launches with like Halo Infinite and Senua Saga Hellblade 2, I don't care if it even had less compute performance than the PS5. If it has those games at launch, that'll get more people to go mm. for it. It's all yeah. going to be. It's always about games. In the end. I mean, if you look at like the Switch selling as well as it does, and it's significantly weaker than the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro. It's just That's very true. You want to play Pokemon? Well, you, you got the Switch. That's and even even if, with the ports, like when you have like Doom running at 30 FPS, if you have developers still cramming the games on there because they sell. Yeah. So th- there's a if there's a if there's a market and money, there's a way. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah, we saw that. We saw some some uh, some developers do some wild stuff with things like Call of Duty on the DS. Uh, I think I think Scott did a video. Oh yeah, which I think Scott did a video recently. Uh, Scott the Waz doing a video on all of the Call of Duty games that were on the DS, and I forgot how terrible those games were. Oh, they were yes. so bad. They were so like ten frames a second. Yeah. But they like, put them on there and they made it work. And I was like, I forgot about these when they popped up. I was watching the video. I was like, I forgot all about these games. At least they were um, tolerable man. on the Wii. Yeah, but I mean, like they got Call of Duty on the Wii, like you said, and it, it was actually they were actually all right. Like it wasn't terrible. Uh, and then they did, I think they did Medal of Honor Heroes two. That had thirty two players online, I think. Yeah, on the Wii. Wii? Yeah, <laughs> which yeah, is I did, crazy. I did a Big video about Wii. Call of Duty on the Wii, um, maybe about six months ago, and there's still a community of people playing that game online. It's amazing. Wow, is and that Black certain, Ops certain, One or something? Black, Black, Black Ops, Ops One and uh, mm-hmm. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Three. I think wow. you can still play them online, and there's a pretty wow. active community. The servers are still up. It's it's amazing. You can That's still play on the Wii. Yeah, there you go. You can still play Just Dance. Why not? Because what? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> they have the newest Just Dance on there. That's so crazy mm-hmm. to be a, a two generation old system, or soon to be mm-hmm. two generation. Yes, no, it is a two generation old system. Mm-hmm. Ugh, I don't want to talk about Just Dance. They're getting people's <laughs> accounts copyright striked out here. <laughs> That's what <laughs> happened. Is Ubisoft, nobody stream Ubisoft's E3 conference this year. <laughs> I won't oh, stream man. conferences anymore. Every time I, I stream a conference, they get claimed or something else happens. Yeah, the claiming happens. I don't care as much about the claim, but Ubisoft does some crazy Go stuff. To with Twitch theirs. for those ones. They'll they'll just blow up your account. Like Ubisoft has done it <laughs> twice in a row now, so it's like I'm just skipping. And last year they didn't have anything good. It was terrible, and and they, and they blew up the account for it. Their co- their conferences have been terrible for a while. Yeah. They're they're like EA levels bad almost. I mean, last year the biggest thing they had was that they brought out a dog on stage, and that was what everyone remembered. Like not Ghost Recon Breakpoint, it was the dog. Oh, they used to have like an aggressive lady. Bad, but... <laughs> an aggressive lady? No, I think you're thinking of that indie developer. You're thinking of Watch Dogs, the when they were demoing the Watch Dogs thing. Oh, the with the old lady, <laughs> the old lady who no, like I, no, I no, feel no, I, I feel I, like there's like a my host. friend Pedro. No, I'm thinking there there was a host of a Ubisoft conference for like two years in a row, and she was like cursing and jo- like she was like. The, the person hosting the event for like two years back to back, I swear. She was like uh-huh. super like aggressive and like overexcited and cursing. Oh, and I was like, Aisha Tyler, was it her? Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah. Was, you should, she's in Watch Dogs. Oh, Nate's back. But all Nate, time's back. Nate, Hi, Nate, what's the, what's the Hi, weird Nate. indie, what's the weird indie game you played this past week? No, nah, there were none. Okay. Uh, let me, let me ask you this. Uh, Jordan, what was the game that I was talking about earlier that we need Nate to look into? It was hyper something unboxed. <laughs> <laughs> that's not very descriptive uh, it's called it's hyper something it's a, it's a hyper it's a one word hyper something not the word something there's something is that word it's in the uh it's in the switches um upcoming games right now oh, hyper something hold on yeah, yeah it's coming out january 31st but it's it looks like it almost looked like army men from it's back hyper, in the day. hyper charge hyper charge on box hyper charge on box see what you can figure out about that game it has eight players online. It has four player split screen locally. It looks dope. It's a shooter, first person shooter. It looked interesting. Um, no, no, uh, no weird indie game. Did what'd you play this past week? I played some Dragon Ball Fighters. 
Okay, that's an interesting one. All right. Trying what, out what the new characters or something. I downloaded Gogeta. Yeah, I you got to test stuff. him out. And... Did you already have that? Or did you buy it when it was like 15 bucks? No, I've had it since launch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. My friend Prajero is like a side scrolling uh, fear. If you mm-hmm. like fear and you like that that kind of like slow mo gameplay, you will love my friend Prajero. Someone brought it up before. It's what made me think of it mm-hmm. now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, my friend Pedro is, uh, that was good. What the hell um, is this game? Oh yeah, you see what I'm talking about. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if you can see if you can figure out uh, at that studio. That's the first game they have on the Switch that I've seen. On. So, um, you know, do your thing. See if you can find it on key mailer or terminals or whatever. And let us know. I'll be uh, curious. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Nate, you were you were also hearing about the PS5 Xbox Series X stuff. We talked about it. Yeah. Okay, very good. Because uh, you said you weren't 100 percent sure on that one either, and I'm I'm kind of not as well because I think the chip that we we are seeing is an older chip, and I think it's going to be slightly more powerful than that. The information is inaccurate. Yes. Okay. Good. That's what I thought. Uh, we're thinking like 10 to 10 and a half. Terrible. Uh, it'll be a little higher. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Um, well, let's so, say. Uh, go, what go, about go. ray tracing, though, Nate? Oh, that's okay. That's another <laughs> thing I, I want to talk about. Ray tracing, <laughs> because I... <laughs> ray tracing is what is going to set the price point for this thing. If there's no ray tracing, which is what the current mm. rumors are telling us, it's three ninety nine all day long. If there is ray tracing, then it has to be higher than three ninety nine. I have a, I have a theory about that one. I too, would but... right now. I would. I would set expectation of both the Series X and the PS5 to be 499 because the difference in power is going to be minimal. Yes. Okay. They're both going to be within the exact same ballpark in terms of specs. But the Series X, we believe, will be a little. That'll be the higher end one, and not really it higher. It'll be, be a little. It'll be a little stronger. You're thinking? It may not be. Interesting. I, I okay. thought it was confirmed by Sony that ray tracing. Hardware yeah, Mark Cerny can... said this. Mark yeah. Cerny said it. <laughs> he told him that, and that's why it's weird that that chip showed up without any type of uh, ray tracing qualities in its description. Uh, and I, I, there was there was a, a theory brought up immediately after that that if it's not part of the chip from AMD that they would be using in something like the Series X, would Sony be working with them to develop their own proprietary way to deal with? "Quote unquote ray tracing that mar- that Nvidia markets right now. Would that be would that be a strategy? What do you think, MVG? Could they could they come up with their own chip or their own method of taking care of it? Um, I mean, I guess they could. I just, I mean, they'd have to partner with, like you said, AMD to get that done. So, and then where does that leave Microsoft with their ray tracing, you know, solution? I mean, yeah, anything's possible at this point. That they, they could well be coming up with their own proprietary ray tracing." design but um you also have to remember that you know games development these days is pretty you know uniform in that code can run pretty much on any platform it needs to without too much too much difficulty so if sony is going down the path of hey we're going to have this custom ray tracing api that the other systems don't then that means there's more development time that has to be put into that in order to get what they need done there so I, I'm not sure if that's the right the right approach to get, they're going to take. Um, I would expect them to be some type of... I expect AMD to come to both parties, Microsoft and Sony, and say, look, this is this is what we got for you guys um, and, and make it happen type of thing. Yeah, okay. C- CES is in a week and a half. I think that's where we're going to see AMD's first real cards that would use any type of ray tracing. So that might be something to watch if you're curious as to what the uh, the Xbox Series X and the PS5 would use. Um, but Nate, you don't think the PS5 would come in at 400? Then you, you're still on the $500 train for that one. Unless Sony is willing to take a substantial loss on the hardware itself, I don't see them undercutting Microsoft by $100. I mean, I think the Series X might be a loss at 500. Then there's no way Sony is going to come in even at four hundred dollars if Microsoft is going to be losing at five hundred. Well, let me ask you this other question then: Do do you guys think that the PS5, if it is very very similar to what the Xbox Series X is in power, do you think it'll have a similar form factor where it's a tower? I don't think it has to go a tower. I mean, we could still feasibly have something that resembles the v-shaped dev kit with just a ton of so events. okay so this is this is funny because that that would mean that we could see the the dev kit 
actually turn into somewhat of a retail unit that would have that method of cooling then is what you're saying. I don't think so, but I mean, <laughs> Sony, basically, Sony has two options. They're either going to make a tower where they can force that heat out, or they have to make this weird grill shaped thing. Yeah. Bunch because of, like, they don't have any options. They have to get rid of the heat because yeah, Microsoft, yeah. Microsoft said that they designed it first and foremost to be powerful. And then they worried about how they were going to turn it into a box that go under your living room oh, no. in, your, in your entertainment center so apparently that is like the design they needed to go with to make it 12 teraflops which i'm fine with it looks like a mini itx tower i have a computer looks just like mm -hmm. it to be honest with you yeah oh yeah like a lot of people probably have amazon alexas like you know standing up in their living room and like what yeah. are we gonna do with this thing oh <laughs> they better get that cooling right they're they're <laughs> they, better get, they get they better get that cooling right because we don't want the same thing that happened with the 360 when that came out mm. and those zen 2 chips as a person who has a couple of them they're hot boys mm. oh okay interesting so that'll they be interesting warm. with a factory with the aio they run warm that'll be interesting yeah. with the usual factory thermal compound that we always see in these things well, they, i mean they, they'll have the fan i assume close to the vent they're probably just pulling air out the top uh the, the real question is is that light gonna be rgb huh <laughs> no. Uh, no. No. Only for special. You better. You got to everybody's got a little playing field. In that rig that I have, I have a with the handle, it has a 3700X to get <laughs> that chip to not run nuclear. Um I had to actually undervolt it and then set the base clock speed to 3.9 gigahertz because it, when I ran up Eight of sixty four, that ship would instantly go up to ninety five degrees, and it's on there mm. properly with high end thermal paste. So okay. they're warm. They're warm. Some so of those words. Mm. So you think maybe that design is to help try to funnel air out of the top straight up like a little wind tunnel, I guess, just to yes. really like rip air out of there. Yeah. Yep. And, and they probably and they probably did things like undervolting the chip too, because there's a lot of there's a lot of laptops now that they come factory undervolted because they mm. want to try to mitigate thermal throttling. So I bet you that's undervolted as well. Yeah, I've, I've uh, I think that Series X design's growing on me a bit. I'm, I'm I think I'm okay with it now. So I, I mean, like it. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm actually kind of hoping now that the PS5 is going to look completely different, like than the Series X. Not even be a tower, just be like some weird design. As long as it um, doesn't look like an old thick VCR player, <laughs> I'll be fine. I, I think it's going to look like I think it's going to look like the PS4 Pro, just like another another just stack an extra another sliver. Stack. Stack. We're just yeah, them. <laughs> it's more of a slant. Oh yeah. man, we're just stacking this thing up. Oh Jeez. man. Uh, look, I could see Tony look, doing that. It could look like it could look like a sack of potatoes. I I, I don't care what it looks like, so long as it doesn't <laughs> overheat and uh, it plays games properly. That's all I care about. I want no red ringers of death. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. I I guess we'll find out yeah. more about the PS5 like soonish. I I think it's gonna be within a month. I think. Yeah, I'd I think say we fe might February. I think it might even be in there's might be a possibility it might be January. Hmm. Well, there, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I think it's going to be pretty close around the time. I feel like Nintendo and Sony have been recently doing things near each other. So I hmm. wouldn't be surprised if they if they have a Nintendo Direct around the same time, too. So, hmm. so that means we'll get an ASMR video from Mark Cerny then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, hello, I'm going to tell you the technology inside of the PlayStation. Yeah, he is <laughs> such a calming, it's such a calming like voice when he talks about technology like that. It's so funny. I, I that's what I think would do. They'd probably have him come out on stage, kind of go over everything, show it off, and then and then they'll probably move into E3 with all of their games and and price points. Um, but I, I I'm starting to think January. What do you what do you think, Nate? You still on the February train? Uh, it's it's tough to say. Mm. Sony Sony kind of just goes at their own pace. I mean, it'd probably be closer to GDC than anything. Okay. Okay. Yeah, people were hoping they'd show up to CES. I don't think they're not. They're going to show up to CES with a TV no one can afford. That's what they're going to show up to CES with. They always do. Um, <laughs> here's this $80,000 TV. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, they're not going to show up. With, I don't think they'll show up with a PS5 there. Although, hey, I mean, people didn't think they'd show up to the Game Awards with the Series X, so I guess, I guess you never know. Um, but uh, any any other thoughts on the Xbox Series X versus the PS5? I mean, is there really anything other than games at this point that it really comes down to if they're going to be that close to each other, like, power-wise? I mean, it just comes down to games then, right? That's, like, it. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I mean, obviously Hellblade is is massive, and then Halo Infinite, as we know, but 
Sony seems to have the upper hand as far as games for the PS5 at this time, but that could easily change with you know the uh, up and coming announcements. That uh, we have. Well, it's it's interesting you mentioned that because you just mentioned uh, Halo Infinite, Hellblade Two. Uh, we know that there's what what's the first PS5 game? Godfall. Yep, Blue Point. Mm-hmm. Godfall yep. does nothing for me. It yeah, was- I don't know. I looked at Godfall and I was like, all right, I guess. <laughs> we haven't seen uh, much about it though, right? Yeah. yeah. I need to see a little more for it before I you see know, gameplay for it's level. like an isometric uh, top down hack and slash. You're like, yeah, no. I, mean, I, <laughs> see, I <laughs> hope to God not. Yeah. I just need to see a little more them. substance to like the game itself. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's supposed to be like a hack and slash looter game, right? That's the yeah. premise. Well, uh, have swords, something. But Blue Point is the other one, and Blue Point is teasing some stuff. I don't know if you guys saw this on Twitter. They always do this. <laughs> They've been doing these cryptic tweets for the last off, few anyway. months. I'm gonna pull a blue point. So it says, uh, "Twas the night before excitement." This was on the 25th, by the way, not on the 24th. It says, "Twas oh. the night before excitement mounts in stealthily wrapped boxes, creatures stirred for announce, hope for adventure and victory spread, Ver- visions of heroes enhanced in their heads." We sprang forth to play, exclaimed at the sight, "Happy gaming to all! There will be no sleep tonight." So. I mean- what Once again, what did, what did you get and out then of that? that I have, and then I'm the down. To, I'm down to three games right now, and I think it's the three games that everyone is hoping, or like one of the three everyone's hoping for. Um, but it did sound like they're referring to something happening set like kind of soon. But they've been doing this for everything going on, every holiday, any, anything. They're they're putting these weird tweets out there. It sounded like they were going to announce something on the 26th then. You did, right that's what it sounded like but then nothing like i wasn't happened. losing sleep over that tweet i wasn't like i wasn't like oh i gotta hold my breath now what are they gonna announce yeah um so i'm down to the three games i'm down to two i mean it's either demon souls right the a remaster of demon souls mm. uh a remake i guess of demon souls um a remake of legend of dragoon or a remake of metal gear solid the first one how popular was Legend of the Dragoon when it that's, came out? This is the problem. Not very. Right? Okay. <laughs> that's, that's where I struggle with that one. Even but though I'd love to yeah. see it come back, I just don't feel like that's the game. It's, the thing, it's Sony owned, so they yeah. could do that. But my problem is two of those three aren't like games that would hit everything. Like, like there are people who look at Demon's Souls and be like, huh. Eh. All right, I guess. And then people would be really excited. But like if they said Metal Gear Solid. Oh, dude, that's pre-order day one, right? For lots of people. That's the big one. Yeah. yeah. If they work with Konami and and Sony came together with them and they're like, we're going to have Blue Point do this and it's going to be on the PS5 as like an exclusive. That would be huge, you know, for them to do that. Um, and there's also a chance that it's something no one's even thinking of right now that Blue Point um, is remaking. Although a lot of people seem to th- believe that it is Demon Souls. Hmm um i'd be okay i didn't i didn't really get into demon souls on the ps3 so i'd be okay with seeing it coming back after doing sekiro after playing through that but ah man if it was metal gear solid that'd be it right there yeah i mean i would get i would get legend of the dragon i mean i'd get all i mean any of those three games i'd probably pick up on on launch day but lots of i think a lot of other people probably wouldn't i think the only one that would be a, a big system seller would be mgs um if that was the the game in my opinion because it, it sounds like blue point's gonna unveil it whenever they show the ps5 i would expect them to unveil the game when the ps5 is announced absolutely and they're building it up like it's going to be their big game like it's going to be it's going to be like the big ps5 launch title possibly um so i i assume it has to be something really really good i wonder um, if halo infinite's actually going to hit for launch oh boy here we mm. go <laughs> mm. this is this is something we talked about. i never published that video by the way mvg and, and right. nate i thought about it and i was like yeah i mean i'll wait for this and then it didn't show up at uh or yeah then it wasn't there at um xo right yeah and it wasn't yeah XO. xo and uh game awards yeah so it wasn't any of this and i was like i i guess i could still publish it and say that we were talking we had talked about halo infinite like not being or having some struggles we'll say at times from from what it looked like um so it it's there is concern there rich i'll say that about halo infinite's um schedule 
It might be interesting as to be all right we'll put out uh the master chief collection on pc to tide people over because we're not gonna be able to... i mean that'll be huge though if they get it out for the launch of the series x you know that'll be a huge one up for microsoft over sony especially if their launch is dry but it'll be kind of be interesting if both systems launch and they both have dry libraries when they launch hmm i i almost feel like they they have to come to the table with some goods like i think the ps5 will have horizon zero dawn 2 I think that might be a launch title. That would be big. Probably some, I assume some third party stuff, but I think that's my, that might be the big thing they go on. And then maybe they'll announce Spider-Man at the conference too, like the next Spider-Man. Um, but uh, yeah, that's Halo Infinite that is concerning me right now. So but you got you to think that, you know, my, uh, Sony's in a, a leading position here because even though both systems are backward compatible, um, Sony's going to bring, all the current, you know, uh, bestseller games across to the PS5. Stuff that some people either wanted to play but never got a chance to or they, they want to double dip and, and play again. So there'll be Last of Us Part Two. There'll be um, Ghost, Ghost of Tsushima. Tsushima. Final Fantasy will probably get a patch for PS5. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's they're, they're going Skyrim. into the next generation with a lot of <laughs> <laughs> Skyrim, yeah. They're going into the next gen with a lot of momentum, even though they may, may not necessarily True. have True. a huge launch lineup of exclusive PS5 games. They'll still have a lot that they can bring to the table. And if they're yep. forwards compatible like that, and they could just patch them and upgrade them with the more capabilities that the new system will have, they, hey, there you go. Oh, Final Fantasy VII Remake would probably look crazy on the PS5. Yep. Man. And then Jordan Skate 4 probably getting announced. Oh, huh? Here we go. God, All right, here we go. So, uh, the story. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's it'll be. I just want to see Blue Point's game. They keep teasing it. They're like retro studios over there. It'd be funny. If Except their game probably won't be canceled. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's sad. Uh let me uh, let me move over to Evan. We got some Discord questions over there, man. Oh, we got? got a couple, yeah. Hit us with a Discord question. Let's let's see what we have. Do you think Switch should focus on a home console or pushing a high refresh rate in a Switch Pro? I, it's kind of wording. I'm guessing. You know, I like the idea or... of Nintendo doing something with a high refresh screen, like next generation, with the uh, Sharp in their Exo screens that can do that. I like that idea. I think that'd be kind of neat if they like marketed it as some kind of. I don't know. They called you know their their haptic feedback stuff HD Rumble. I don't know. They could, like True Motion or some weird thing. <laughs> I'd like the idea if they came out with the screen and they were like, oh, it's 144 hertz or something on on the handheld screen. That'd be cool. That'd be a cool idea. I think that'd be neat. But then, especially with uh, games like uh, like where Mario Odyssey was 60 frames on the Switch and maybe it could have been they could make it higher on like the next gen and it's that'd be, be kind of neat. I mean, maybe, but I, I feel like with the current games, they'd have to patch them to even increase the frames, let alone the hardware involved that would need to be enhanced. For things I mean, like, like I was thinking more like on the next gen one like you know four years from now or something whenever Hopefully. that launches or whatever but uh i like the idea of like a high refresh screen i think it'd be cool to do that um you said also for a home you said also for a home i console. guess home console or pushing the high refresh for a handheld uh, maybe they'll never make it the they'll never make another nintendo from here on out is going to make hybrid consoles they're never going to go back to a conventional home home console oh yeah the hybrid i mean the hybrid stuff worked well for them so why, why i do like it too uh, I, I don't necessarily agree. I mean, <laughs> I, I think in the short term, absolutely. But it's the same argument I heard about the Vita. The Vita is dead, right? I mean, we're, we're none of us dispute that. But what? The Vita, it the sells Vita in is Japan. Dead. Come on. Only because the the new CEO says it's dead. Whoever replaces him, he may come back, come around, and say, you know what? We're bringing we're bringing handhelds back. Bring you know, it we, back. So I, I I don't like to say, hey, this is this is absolute. This is the way it's going to be. Mm. But I, I would say for the next ten years at least, we will see, um, you know, the, the switch like systems hybrids are being being released. Next couple generations, yeah. they'll get bored so. and they'll so, change it up. That's what they do. Like, are you dismissing <laughs> the possibility of a console scheme <laughs> in, like, also with the light handheld? flagship hybrid and then just a standalone console skew of the switch or are you still entertaining i like i do like that i i do like that idea of a console skew just like by itself like it's you know it's part of the the quote-unquote switch family because we already have a switch that doesn't switch now so i mean what, what would that really be that crazy to think about if it was just a box you bought that was cheaper because it doesn't have a screen or any of that dock or any of that stuff you just plug it in almost like an nvidia shield i guess yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the tech, the technology is there. 
the research is is basically done. All they have to do is take the internals and put it into a stationary box. What controller do they put with it? The Pro throw controller? On a, throw pro. Thing for like 150. Throw on a Pro controller. There it is. I mean, 150 with a Pro controller and that? That's not bad. I, I'd buy that. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to sell 30 million units. It can sell yeah, 10 million yeah. units and, and it's going to be profitable. Yeah, because they would just drop the same board in there, probably. I'd oh, probably open course. that thing yeah, up, and it's still, it still have the battery connector in it, probably. Yeah, they would just yeah, they would have the solder points, and everything just wouldn't be connected. Yeah, that would be funny. Oh man, that you know that's not a bad idea because we we've seen Nvidia. Uh, if you look at their new shield, the the one that's like a tube almost. Yeah, that board is tiny, and that thing. Mm. If you open it up, like, that board is small, and it's still the same Nvidia like chip it's there. only 32 bit though so it's uh, it, it's it's quite limited in, in what it can do as far yeah, as i heard about that that yeah. makes no sense it, I mean, it's it great, the same it, processor it, yeah it's the same inside. processor but it's 32 bit i mean it's great for streaming apps and stuff but if you want to like load it up full of emulation the emulators and stuff it's not going to work very well but like the shield tv board inside is pretty small too like the shield tv oh, is yeah. small you know it's, yeah. it's like, like something like that if nintendo sold something that way that would be that would, that would actually, I think that'd be an alright skew to have just to put it out there because they would technically then make it even cheaper at 150. So it'd be 150, 200, and 300 then. Yep. So. Maybe they could even go like 129 with it, make it even more appealing. Mm, that would kind of turn it. What's the the what the PlayStation TV? That's that would be basically right. The Vita it's, TV. Vita TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, one. Yeah. 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 yeah, but that was but the thing was done with. Wasn't there a decent amount of games that had compatibility? It just didn't issues? work. <laughs> yeah, Let's see the Switch at least it, it, there would be the the there would be a minimal compatibility issues except maybe yeah. Like some you could games. you could get around that though. There was there was a patch you could run. If you yeah, had, but like there were some weird ones. There was like Uncharted where you had to use a touch screen kind of. Yeah. I remember that was a whole thing when that they, came out. <laughs> they figured a way to kind of emulate that as well. But there were some games that later on they just got lazy and just kind of blacklisted on the Vita TV for no reason. Like Windjammers. Windjammers is a perfectly fine game to run on on the Vita TV, but it wouldn't work without without a patch. Oh yeah, when, when what? Why wouldn't that work? Yeah, they just they kind of got lazy towards the end. So now we're not going to bother. <laughs> now we're good. TV. Yeah, can it play? <laughs> make it, this ain't making money. We're good. Can it play Unit Thirteen? Oh man, I think so. <laughs> then we're fine. Remember. Then we're fine. <laughs> Gosh, that's great. Poor, poor Unit Thirteen. It killed Zipper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Oh man, I supported it. I loved that game when it first came out. Really? I tried to, I tried to play it like a year ago, and I was like, what the hell is it about this game? <laughs> uh, I like the idea of that, though. If they have a, a new quote-unquote system entry into the family every holiday, and next holiday it's this little box that they sell that's just like a cheapo or a cheaper uh, Switch version, I'd actually be all right with that. That'd be kind of cool. Dude. Especially if it comes with a Pro Controller, because then you get an extra Pro Controller out of it. So why not? uh let me move over here to uh oh the the switch game cartridges uh we had a report come out that the switch was going to or the technology i guess would finally be made available by my macronics next year 2020 that would allow them to get to larger cartridge sizes what the largest one that's used now is the 32 gigabyte cartridge which is that witcher one that you have rich uh, that you just showed and then uh dragon quest heroes one and two that was in japan i imported that thing and cut it open to look at it but it just looked like a chip um that one also uses a 32 gigabyte chip i don't think there's anything else there might have been a final fantasy release in asia that used it as well but i think that was it now macronic says nintendo is their first customer apparently and that's going to be next year in late 2020 but there's no word if anyone's actually going to be using this or nintendo is just getting in there to start licensing and make them available if a developer wants them so is any game actually going to use the 64 gigabyte cartridge in this current switch's lifetime well, maybe. I mean, if they still find some way to port games over that go to the PS5 and Series X and really whittle them down, you're going to need that extra room. So it could be, it's very possible. I mean, I can think of two games that could use it Final Fantasy VII Remake and Halo Master Chief Collection. Oh, I knew it. He, it was so funny. Right? You, you showed up and you were like, yo, let's put Final Fantasy VII Remake on this thing. Hey, it's only, it's only exclusive for a year. There you go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you keep hearing about Halo coming to the Switch. There we go. I, I wish that it would. That'd be so awesome. Uh, you know, we never talked. We never did. We talk about that rumor. Yes, last did we? week I think. I, oh, we yeah, did. We talked about did. last week. 
Oh man, that's funny. That's a cheat for Smash, dude. But if they're having problems getting Reach to run on the Xbox One, they, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking they would just bring over Halo One and be like, "We're good," or Halo Two. I'd be happy with that. Bring over Halo One, Two, and they could We're probably good. bring Three over too. <laughs> yeah, at least Three ODS. Do One, Two, and Three, and make it the trilogy or something. Be like, "Oh, it's yeah. the trilogy." Just forget about Four. It's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, sixty-four gigabyte cartridges. Final Fantasy Seven remake. I get. I mean, that would be bigger than Blu-rays that are used now. Although Final Fantasy Seven remake apparently is coming on two Blu-rays. So that's like 70 something gigabytes worth of space for that game, which is crazy. Um, but they could probably be able to compress it and get it down to 64 if they needed to. However, only a few games have used 32 gigabyte cartridges because apparently they're so expensive. I, I'm not even sure how expensive that 64 gigabyte is, but it must be it must be pricey. So there I Nate, we had talked about how there was probably a deal between CD Project Red Nintendo in order to make The Witcher 3 happen, right? That's the belief. There may have That's been some sort of publishing incentive provided by Nintendo. Yes. It's, I mean, it's not confirmed, but it would make sense that CD Project Red got some sort of discount or benefit to use a 32 gigabyte card. Okay. So the, the, there are games that have not shown up on the Switch now uh because of these cartridges it is an actual issue so let me ask you guys this 64 gigabyte cartridge is on the table right now what game mvg said final Fantasy 7 remake already okay that's fine <laughs> okay <laughs> what game would you guys go out if you're nintendo partner with them and bring it over no questions asked the cartridge don't worry about it we'll take care of it just because we think it's a big enough deal to get it over here don't even worry about technical issues you can just name a game that you think would be cool Red to have Dead. on the switch Oh, there you go. Okay. Twist two. Good job. Twist <laughs> twist two. Two as well. Red Dead is a big. That is a big one. If they if they made that work, that would be a big deal. If that mm -hmm. happened. How big is GTA Five? GTA Have Five is a weird one because it was on the 360, right? And it wasn't that big then. And then it wasn't it the two CDs. Though, the, it was 360. It was an yeah. install, and then it was a play disc. I remember this because people would try to trade the thing in, and they'd be missing one or the other all the time. Uh, but it had an install disc and a play disc, and even then, I think it was still only like. 12 or 13 gigabytes or something but mm. when it went to the xbox one of the ps4 it jumped in size that had first pretty well two. i thought cyberpunk um, 2077 oh how big we know how big I'm, i wonder how big that game is i don't think it's no. gonna be size wise oh man that's no gonna be idea. crazy that would that would make those the uh, cpu cores in that segra smoke <laughs> 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 just light on fire man uh i was i was thinking um uh near uh Oh, that's, that's a good one. That might be one. that might be a little more realistic, maybe in my part. I should have gone something crazy like the like Final Fantasy Seven or Red Dead or something else. But I just thought of Nier. I said Nier. Nier is kind of large. I thought, isn't it? Am I off on that? Maybe I'm I need to get. I could look at. I could look at Steam right now and find yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll say maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's but, smaller. I just. I, well, I remember. Combat. Maybe somebody can uh, can uh, tell me the size of that one. Let's that see. One. I see Kingdom Hearts uh, PS4 collection in the chat. That was 50 gigabytes. There you go. Sekiro. What about um, how big's the Mass Effect collection? One, two, and three. Oh, man, don't get my hopes up. <laughs> uh, on PC, near Autonoma would be 46 gigabytes. Oh, there we go. Okay, that, that makes sense. Someone. There we go. I okay. didn't realize that game was so big. What about I think Persona? They've, they've added some stuff, though. Persona? Mm -hmm. is, is that Persona? a bigger game? That's a good question. I, you know, I have it on disc. I don't think I've ever actually looked at how large the install is yeah. on my PlayStation. Um, we could probably look up Persona Persona Five. Mm -hmm. That's that's neat. That's a good one to, to move over if, if there if there wasn't some crazy deal that we all think is there for Sony. Um, that would be a good one. Uh, yeah, I think man, it's going to be interesting to see if that happens. The big question is going to be: Can they get those thirty-two gigabyte cartridges cheaper? Because I think that's like the key. Like the sixty-four gigabytes, great and all, but with some of the the stuff these developers have been able to do to get the sizes of games smaller in general, I think if they get those thirty-two gigabyte cartridges cheaper, that's like that's when you'll see a lot of games start to really show up on the system mm -hmm. that you might not have expected before. I see Nate kind of doing that thing where he's just very very quietly in the background, just like hmm. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> I wouldn't bank on just game card size suddenly bringing software to this platform. I agree. Mm. It's, it's, it's about the limitations. What do you What do you think? What do you think, Nate? Anyone going to use a sixty four gig card? 
Not, I mean, definitely not next year. Definitely not 2021. I'm thinking we'll about probably, one of the last games. It probably was... wouldn't be until Switch 2. You think this is more or less just them future-proofing this, for the next system? Yeah, this is just technologies available. Nintendo wants to have it. It's just getting it ready. It's it's not it's not indicating that, oh, we're going to get um, Final Fantasy VII Remake Episode 1 and 2 on a single 64-gigabyte game card on Switch in 2021. No, no way. It doesn't have the it doesn't have the processing power. It can't it, there would be no way you could do it? Sure, there is. I mean, it'd be seven twenty p, right? It could be done. It'd be, it'd be yeah, like it'd be like cloud it'd, on the screen. It would be two forty p. Oh man, running at twelve frames a second. Now that's drive hey, distance after of the, after the Witcher after the Witcher port. I I don't I don't um, discount anything coming out for the Switch. Oh, I was going to say that you guys true. played it on the Switch. Because I didn't play it on the Switch. Witcher? Th- yeah, did it turn out okay? Uh, it's like, excellent. In your opinion? It's top okay. quality. Top quality. Shockingly that was a surprise to me. Okay. I want to see. Uh, I want to see Outer Worlds. That's what I want to see on the Switch. See how that comes out. Mm. That is. Yeah, it's basically Fallout. <laughs> People really control? want Fallout on the Switch. Oh, is that an exclusive? No, no, it's Remedy. Uh, that that could actually. I don't even think that one. You know, Control looks. So Control looks pretty good in some instances, but it is. I mean, it's kind of like a corridor. I don't think like that engine w- would game. port very that's well. The biggest, that's the biggest direction. That's the biggest. That's the biggest problem is that engine. Like you're saying, MVG. Um, it, it acts super weird on the Xbox as it is. Like there are some times where it was doing some wonky stuff on my Xbox One X. Uh, but man, charm. when it works, when that engine works, and you like you go into a room and like explode like a desk and papers go flying everywhere, it looks really good. Oh yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't know how that one art direction, by the way. I was playing it as well uh, over the last like seven or eight days. Just just check it out again. And I'm like, I, yeah, I don't see it. I don't I don't see this at all. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of turned it on because I was like art direction. OK, mm, art no, direction. no, that is not. No, <laughs> uh, Evan, you got another discord question for us. Next gen consoles. We think in HDMI or display ports. Ooh. HDMI for tvs um, hdmi yeah. i mean it has to be hdmi because what hdmi 2.1 is coming um and they'll need that uh especially as they're talking about high frame rates and they're talking about 8k and all this stuff okay we'll see about 8k but uh, uh i like their push for higher frame rate that that's gonna be neat if they can i i mean most of us just want 4k 60 but that's probably like 120 frames i think they'll use that for the racing games but they'll need hdmi 2.1 i you know what i thought about it the Series X might have a display port on the back alongside of HDMI. It's possible. Yeah, that would be interesting because the, the way that they're kind of marketing it and like showing it, people look at it like a PC anyway at this point. But don't and, forget, doesn't the One X like support FreeSync and and yeah, stuff? yes, it, it does. does. And you yeah, can get also, conversion cables anyway. You can get things that go from display to HDMI. It it also supports like 120 hertz and all of this stuff. Um, but it does support a lot of things you would think about for a monitor right now. Um, in some cases like that FreeSync. Uh, but I I think though I think it's gonna have HDMI 2.1 one on the back is what i would assume um hmm. but you know I, w- I wouldn't be mad if it was a display port i'd be fine with that because i use my stuff is all hooked up to a monitor anyway so i don't care whoa <laughs> make it make it a make it a display port you heard it here first yes not there the you only go. thing but <laughs> uh evan we got another discord question i'm gonna uh, go over to super chat soon we'll got a guy asking if there's any updates that anyone has heard about for beyond good and evil 2 <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go with this game. Okay. I have so, it. <laughs> Let's hear some updates. Uh, this game, it I think that I think it's a PS5 Xbox Series X game first of all. I I they've shown it played on a PC a couple times during live stream and even then I was like, are we sure this is like a current gen game because they're talking about how they want to do all of this crazy stuff. You remember they were trying to get people to show up and was it music they were trying to get people to do for them? Do you remember this? There was like a program the, and yeah. had someone come out on stage and they were like, you can do uh, uh, audio work. The, was audio the work? only was thing I remember on stage for that was just the entire team coming out and being like, thank you for our jobs. And I just don't know where they are right now. But I don't know if that was for audio or artwork. It was something where you would collaborate with them and you'd provide like was that, audio. Was or that something. the Gordon Levitt, Gordon Levitt thing where he came yes. out and they wanted all that in yeah i remember that that was very strange yeah very strange i, I didn't just hear remember a cursing that. monkey 
<laughs> oh, it's, yeah. Because this was around the time that the company thought they were going to get bought out, or Ubi thought, Ubisoft, I think, from whatever Ubi it was. Thought. Ubi thought. From Ubi Vivendi. Thought. <laughs> yeah. From Vivendi, yeah. Um, that was a whole thing anyway, but, I, man, I think I think that's a game that's going to be, if we don't see it next E3, it, it's it's not probably not looking great. Um, I, th- yeah, I think that's a PS5, Xbox Series X game, though. And uh, it's, it's strange that they showed it fully playable like a year ago i think that's a games that never was released youtube video in five years game yeah i agree <laughs> man that's that's gonna be that's gonna be real that, sad if that game never comes out that oh would be man such a black eye for ubisoft if that happens that is gonna remember be so when sad. it was a switch exclusive oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh nate's nate's bringing up the past here what? Man, dude, the build-up to the Switch was crazy with some of those rumors. <laughs> it was, it was back. supposed to be an NX exclusive. Oh gosh! And then, yeah. I mean, so was so was Mother Three. <laughs> facts. To so Australia, facts. You. <laughs> dude, Mother Three's been around for that rumor's been around forever. It'll probably always be around too. Yeah, because <sighs> people won't let it go. It's a meme at this point. Mm, let me go through some of the super chats here. Matthew says, uh, happy birthday, Spawn. Thanks, Matthew. Uh, message uh, message deleted. There's no message there. Okay. Uh, that, was oh, a, uh, do- that was a rich pickle comment that was spinning ah, earlier. Got it. Uh, Very nice. <laughs> people, are, people are obsessed with the cucumbers that will never die. <laughs> uh, Rikudu Perez says, uh, Spawn Wave finally sponsored by Cutting Edge Gamer. <laughs> <laughs> Another meme that'll never die. And then Ethan R says, "Cutting edge gamer again." <laughs> <laughs> then uh, Playboy says, uh, "One super chat for Rich's nips." Hashtag exposed. There you go. <laughs> uh, I was gonna oh. come on the stream shirtless, but I, I don't know. I think I would have gotten scared. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, no, we embrace it. I I it says uh, I am awake. Says okay. This was a, this is actually a, something that was on it popped up on Twitter because I saw Nate comment on it about about gatekeeping or something says does it oh, count boy. as <laughs> does it count I as oh this. mvg commented on this too yeah, okay no these all popped up my I, these oh, all popped up in my so twitter shit. timeline and i was like what is happening right now <laughs> uh, uh it says does it count as finishing a game if you use features like save states rewind and fast forward yes, mike Matei yes, talked about this yes, today is that what I'm, okay okay, okay mike Matei i'm actually John making Tron. a video on this tomorrow interesting Okay, I'm fascinated now. This is this is this is a new topic. Is the goal just who can suffer the most and screw themselves over in case something happens? What for what? For what? It's so called that's, elitism. That's what it sounds like to me. It's just like yeah, I suffered and did it the most difficult way. So you it's have someone, to. It's, it's um, gatekeeping the way you should play a game. You know, like it's. Yeah, I, I feel like the same argument would kind of happen with Fire Emblem that you had, like, that you could go back in time with the, the the Fire Emblem thing. And I used it, and people were like, yo, you can't do that. If you make a mistake, you got to stick with it. It just... No, that's not fun. The entire do that. playthrough. It's okay. like, no, well, my the people mechanic are alive is there. Forever. Why wouldn't I use it? I, I, have, I have a fence between my ass cheeks on this one because I get both... <laughs> I get both sides. Uh, we get both sides of the coin. Weird, both way sides of the Weird way to word it, but okay. Like the developers back then intended you to finish the game in a certain way. Fine, I get what Mike yes. Matei is saying, but I also see. Look, it's 2019. I have three kids and a bunch of other shit to do. Instead yeah. of me trying to play the game 300,000 goddamn times, I could just rewind it to get past this part so I could do other things with my life. So I get Mike Bate and I get what other people are saying. And how you want a game is how you want a game. It, 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 that's how I kind of, that's my final well, statement. Well, a lot, yeah. of the, a lot of that old way was to get as many quarters out of your pocket as possible because you had that to keep restarting. Yeah, yeah. No, that's too. like, it literally that's sounded mo- like that it was like if Mike Matei or the people talking about it who had that like elitism, like it has to be played this way, sound like the bullies who would hang out at the arcade, you know, you know, with their quarters and their leather jacks just hanging out by a machine and taking it over. Weird arcade that, near you. Jontron was, Jontron was slapping people around in the comment section too. He's like, yeah. who's never, who's never beat an snes game by the way i'm like dude seriously 
<laughs> like, I was like, bro, half the people on Twitter are like 10. Like, I a think, lot of people haven't. I think what, what really kind of triggered people was the way he worded it. Because he said, and I'm, I'm looking yeah. at his tweet, he said, you did not, in caps, by any stretch of the imagination, beat the goddamn game. <laughs> so, you know, a, it, a, a lot of people kind of took that uh, pretty pretty in, in, in different ways i will say but i mean I, I i disagree completely with him because for me rewind and save states that's just a time saver that's you know back in the day you didn't exactly. have you didn't have save states you'd have to leave your your console running all day mm-hmm. out, on, on pause right at that spot right to, to go back to because that's all you had unless you had a battery save or something but all save states really do does is give you um, uh, and the ability to, to save time and get through the game faster. I mean, if you have those tools, just use them. I mean, if you beat the game, you beat the game unless you have like an unlimited vulnerability cheat or, you know, some type of cheat that lets you just run through the whole game or a game genie code that, that, that warps you to the last level. The Konami code. Oh, that's, just to, see, that's, like, that's the thing. Yeah, it's, it's the same people called, who use that stuff like, back in the day. cheat codes. So it yes. is yes. cheat. A rewind is just allowing me to tackle the obstacle without having me to spend 15 minutes to get to that obstacle to face it again. It allows me instantaneously to face the obstacle. I still have to overcome it. These features aren't a bypass of skipping over any of these challenges. I still have to overcome the challenge. And, and to a degree, I mean, point. it's kind of always been around with stories, story games that have branching paths and stuff. You just save before you make a choice, and then you have like multiple save files going just so you can see all the endings and choices anyway. And that, that was something from way long ago. And yeah. we have newer technology now. Like I remember with Castlevania and the NES, I had two friends sleeping over. We were trying to beat Dracula. And when we, had, when we went to sleep, we had to just hope and pray the NES didn't crash overnight. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just newer technology to allow you to do things you couldn't do back then. So I guess I don't side with my, I, I'm not on the fence on this one. I disagree with Mike, but say, never mind. So you didn't, you didn't, you didn't beat like, the game, but you completed the game, right? So you should say you completed there's, the game. And there's like an element of an asterisk to it, but just like with speed runs, I think, because if you're going for a speed run, you can tell someone your time and be like, that's my time. Whereas like with this, if you're trying to ask someone like, did you beat Contra without the Konami code? Like that's impressive. But no. if not, if not, you can talk about like the end of the game anyway, if you all used it, you're like, oh, that last boss. So you have that like mm-hmm. kind of camaraderie, I guess, in a way. Me and my uncle used to be Contra all the time with the Konami, with the, uh, Konami code, man. Farthest had- my brother and I got was the end of the, uh, the factory level with all the down spikes without the Konami code. Oh, that's brutal. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't see this any different as like, you know, adding, feeding quarters into an arcade machine. Like I, it takes me 16 credits to beat Metal Slug. I mean, is that, is that me, you know, cheating to get to the end of the game? No, it's, I'm beating the game. I've completed the game. It just cost me $30 in, in money to get there. That's all. <laughs> well, I mean, at the same point is if you look at a walkthrough, are you cheating because you, mm. you educated yourself on Ah, that's, the that's a good point too. No walkthroughs. You can't watch any YouTube videos. So, I, mean, I mean, this is all just mm-hmm. gatekeeping stuff. And then people want to use like speed runs. It's like, oh, I beat the, I beat Mario 64 in four seconds. Well, you bypassed 99.9% yes. of the game. Hell so yeah. did you yeah. beat it? No, well, you went from the start to the final boss. Yeah. You didn't beat <laughs> shit. Then. That's always the goal, man. <laughs> so, I mean, this is, it's just, it's bullshit elitist gatekeeping to say, well, look at the struggle I had. I mean, it's like an old person coming up to you now saying, when I was a kid, I had a, I had a walk to the well to get my water. Look 15 at you. miles you think up your water is as good as mine because you get it from a faucet, you little shit? No, I think this is even worse. Can we imagine Nate as a dad? dad. <laughs> Walkthroughs are cheating. Look, Castle, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. I mean, you can't even, it's literally cryptic. You need a walkthrough. Like there was ways you could need the Nintendo out. power. They they, yeah. they they knew what they were doing with that. You can call them up. <laughs> call the hotline. If you got stuck. Oh man, that was uh, that was really annoying. By the way. So Nate, power. when's the video coming out for this? <laughs> make the, <laughs> make the video. This is the next Nate the hate. Come on, dude. Uh, I I am not touching this top. I do it. No, touch it. Touch it. That's a good top. Embrace it. On Twitter now. Embrace the hate. Oh man, that's great. Well, also, I mean, technically. You shouldn't be emulating the game either. You got to get real hardware, right? Even for okay, high school, you want to go into a hole. We're doing more. that, yeah, but, right? yeah, but that's the thing with depends on the gatekeeper. That's the thing I mean, with I mean, those. Uh, we might as well go all the way, right? That's the thing with the arcade high scores. You have to do it on like original hardware. You can't just yeah. like do an emulation. 
and a CRT, right? Get the CRT yep. out. Yeah, you can't, have, can't yeah. have LCDs. Yeah, right. Can't have flat exactly. screens. Not without it. Yeah, we're not. We're, I mean, it's yeah, all we're, situational. We got all the way honestly. here, right? All right, I'm gonna go set the uh, world record on Gotcha Gotcha Force. I'll be back. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we'll see anybody emulating that. You got to get real hardware, <laughs> actual game. Uh, yeah, I, 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 it's there. Whatever people. I mean, it's, you're emulating it anyway. So, and, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, it's, we we went we were we were in a world where people on the Wii U were asking why Metroid couldn't crouch or couldn't crawl. So we've cycled through gamers at this point, you know, several times over. So well, like like the ridiculous thing about the entire topic is who gives a damn? That guy how does. I beat the game. Does that it affect guy does. how you played the game? No, it it's oh no, Mike doesn't like that little Jimmy in Saskatchewan used <laughs> rewind. This mythical who place gives you a speak shit? of. Little Jimmy's happy he beat the game. Does it, does it make Mike's life somehow uh, less screw Jimmy that little No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let the people play the game. If the little kid's happy saying, I beat it. Oh, you're going to walk up to him and say, you use rewind. You suck at life. Of course you're not. I would. Sit down and shut the fuck up. <laughs> you just imagine some little kids Lucas playing the game. You walk into a room, you're like, little shit. Anybody ever gets bullied, bullied, go to Nate. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> My network's going to be bad at me tomorrow for calling out Mike Mitzay, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. How dare you have an opinion? Oh, People can have their own opinion about things. How dare you? It's not like, it's not like a dislike of my potato. It's just he made his uh, bad take. Right. Yeah, we you all have bad tweets. Bad bad tweets. I've, I've had plenty of bad takes. We all got bad takes. I'm still, I'm still we don't like each other. to this day. That's yeah, uh... cool. I think we've all, we've all yelled at the sky at one point on Twitter. That's cool. That's why I have my mental breakdown. <laughs> uh, uh, um... Spatu says, "Where, uh, where, who does super chat money go to? Well, a lot of it surprisingly goes to YouTube. Yes, good percent. Thirty percent. Shocked at how much YouTube takes from that. It's crazy. Uh, uh, Ronnie says, off topic, but I can't help myself. Have any of you heard the new Tool album? Tool is a new album. Holy Ooh. shit." <laughs> I used to listen to Tool when I was like, I mean, I still love their song, that song, but I used to listen to Tool when I was twelve. Hmm. Fear inoculum is what they they have here. Uh, Quantum says Ubisoft stocks are plummeting. I believe it because they uh, did a pretty poor job recently with a lot of their games, and now they're asking their own developers for ideas. So yeah, I can see that. That was not that. That was <laughs> that, that, no no. That story was ridiculous. I, I have someone I know at Ubisoft, and he said that was complete bullshit. That story. Where did that story come from? Was that just from just Came I, from I, one of the I, big websites. I don't remember which one. I don't want to say because I'll say the wrong one. Say. But it was one of the big websites that came out with it. They were like, "Yeah, they're asking developers for help." Did it start with like, a K. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it was uh, them. Mm. It was. I have to go back and look, but no, that that story wasn't wasn't it. Start with a P. <laughs> <laughs> no, their their latest reporting with some of their games and the money they were bringing in from them wasn't wasn't great. I think it was mostly Ghost Recon Breakpoint that hurt them. So. I thought the division two didn't do the numbers they wanted as well. That too, yeah, because they were. They, I think they started to realize that they were having too many live services all at once, and it wasn't like they were pulling people from their own games back and forth. So they'll, they'll bounce back. Don't, don't worry. Twenty twenty will be a good year for them. Think, why, you think Watch Dogs gonna be good? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. I think so. Interesting. I heard some things, and I'm not sure now. <laughs> mm-hmm. There are some focus groups going on, and I'm like, uh, oh no. I call it a big. A little concerning. That one. <laughs> so, but I think that's why they delayed it, though. So, oh, that's good. Well, I'd yeah. rather have a game be delayed than come out and be shit. So, it's delayed for a couple reasons, but that's one. Of them. Yeah, I- I'm curious if they're going to release Watch Dogs and then Assassin's Creed within like two months of each other. Yeah, they're they're going to be. Uh, uh, don't be surprised when you see it all being launch titles for next gen cross. Uh, I can see, I can see that actually happening. Believe it or not, uh, cross gen Watch Dogs Three is going to drop in like October, November. That's pushed back quite a bit. Where's Assassin's Creed then? It's around the same time, <laughs> just like what happened when the PS4 and Xbox One came out, they had a, a Watch Dogs and uh, that'll be interesting. And Assassin's Creed at the same time. Kind of a cannibalistic thing to do, but they, yeah, they've done it before. Well, with new Assassin's Creed, it's way different from Watch Dogs. So with with the new mechanics of Assassin's Creed, play way different. Okay. Um, okay. So that's good. At least it's not the same. Same. You still uh, go to giant towers and you unlock your course, though. 
Corsonic says, I've been playing Child of Light as my first indie game. Hmm. Uh, Universal Wand says, uh, stream being brought to us by Cutting Edge Gamer. So the Cutting Edge Gamer, uh, shout out. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, Quantum Dude Bro with the uh, Yen symbol, I think. Yes. Uh, Mom says, I will give... Uh, if I would give MVG a hundred dollars if he gets his eyebrows done. Whoa, what's wrong with his eyebrows? He's got really nice eyebrows. Man, you should have you should have seen my eyebrows. eyebrows. You should have seen my eyebrows, man. I looked like I looked like they were like afros off my head. So. <laughs> uh, uh, Rich Lockard, no message. Thanks, uh, Rich. Uh, JM, the elite fan says, "What's everyone's thoughts on the Witcher show? I think they did a terrific job." I watched. Carol. I watched the uh, the entire. I binged the first season. Uh, I I like it. I mean, it's it's not perfect. There's there's some issues with it, and I think a lot of people don't like the. Um, if you if you're not familiar with it, basically there's there's kind of flashback episodes, and then there's kind of present episodes, and they don't really do a good job of, of explaining what what they're, current they're not time even, is. They're not even episodes. It's all just interwoven the whole way yeah, through but, to like the last one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, but otherwise, I think it's. I, I like it. I, I thought it was, oh, yeah, it was really solid. Good. I've, I've Henry, watched. Henry Cavill is good. Yeah. Um, the supporting actors are good. I, I think the story is interesting. As someone who hasn't doesn't isn't read the books or anything, I've only played the, the Witcher three. I didn't really play the first game because I thought it was too kind of clunky. In the second game, I never really played. But um, I think it's. I think it's good. I've rebinged oh, yeah, it like watched... three more times. Oh wow! Nice. How many, how many episodes first... are there? Eight. 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 Yeah. I've watched episode one. Uh, I haven't had a chance to finish the series. I know it kind of focuses on Yennefer quite a lot more than it does uh, with uh, Geralt. Yeah, um, and later on, I think it's yeah, it's kind of more about her than it is about um, Geralt. But yeah. um, he he kind of gets more of a supporting role later on in the show. But that's what I, I heard. think. It, I think it's which, still pretty cool and set itself up really well for season two, which they did say, announce. The ending of the, of the first episode, like that fight in, in oh, the dude. town they get yeah. better the, from the first kill from yeah. the first sword kill where it's that gruesome yeah. i was like okay yeah that's some quality stuff yeah, like, give me some more of that they definitely that's get better for that it's a pretty good stuff he stabs and then lifts up through and pulls a sword out that way i haven't even seen a kill like that in a long time have you played MVP, the games because the executions you, in the game are that no, bad. I've, I've played I've, i haven't beaten three i've played i've played a little bit of three um if, if you watch but, it closely it's all one take as well so the camera's just kind of panning around while he's, oh, he's yeah. doing the doing it it's it's a, it's a good show i like it a lot. but i i like i don't, I don't want to get into anything but yeah but yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 it's good i like it so uh let me have uh yes message no message okay thanks message uh says tatsu says any rumors available for switch to <laughs> i haven't heard anything recently i think uh, we're still we're still pretty far out for a switch two i guess uh, I don't know if any revisions or anything outside of that, but it's been, it's actually been pretty quiet over the last month or so for a lot of switch stuff. I'm so. kind of thinking at this point, if it doesn't come out in 2020, we may as well just call it Nintendo's next gen switch system. It's not going to be mm. like a iterative thing. Yeah. So. At that point, you're too far into the generation. You yeah. might as well plan for the next it, one. It, it's like us saying, I told you a PS5 is going to come out. Like, you know what I mean? The, yeah. It, what? <laughs> I mean, it kind of hit that point with even all discussion of a Switch Pro. I mean, we've had the topic come up in 2017, 2018, 2019. So even if one does come out in 2020, it's like you can't talk about it for three straight years and then say, look, I told you about this. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I might as well start talking about the PS6 once the PS5 launches and say, just hey, get ahead of the curve. Sony has something more powerful coming. Well, three years would be like the midlife thing, kind of like what PS4 did with the PS4 Pro or and Microsoft did with the X. So I guess you could kind of still say it's a pro at that point. I mean, the holiday holiday 2020 even would be, that'd be what, three and actually like three and a half year, three and three quarters then because they mm -hmm. launched it in March at a weird time. If, um, if Nintendo does have a revision plan for 2020, I will just say a pro type variant. It has to launch August. You think you before, oh, before the PS5 in. and the yeah, uh, you Series cannot X. have it go up against the PS5 sense. and the Xbox Series X. You also Maybe, need yeah. a big game. So would it to go just be it. smarter to not release next year? Yeah, but they launched the light in September. That they could do that, couldn't they? They could launch it in September. But I feel even if it's that close, because then it's only a couple months to the other consoles, and 
I feel like more people would just like let me. I have my money set aside for those consoles. I don't want to mm. buy another Switch. That makes sense too. Or so they all just got like, other jobs uh, for all the consoles. Come on. Oh, oh that's right. They can just get a, a seventeen <laughs> jobs. That's correct. Yeah. Just, I think just they can launch a twenty twenty one holiday. I think smarter them. Like August of twenty. Mm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Wilkin says, "Love the channel. Can't wait for the mid generation Xbox revisions to be called the Series XS and the Series SX." <laughs> Just call them the Series Sex at that point. It'll be easy. <laughs> yeah, when they if they have to do revisions of those, that will be. Uh, that's me though. I assume they're just going to use all the alphabet and then move on to I don't know. Microsoft uh, with their naming, man. They should have just done the numbers just like Sony did. Would have made life so much easier. Yeah, they just they you know they did that whole thing with the image. They're like, well, we can't be Xbox Two while they're PlayStation Three, and it's like uh, they'd be I an Xbox like, Four. I feel like consumers would have figured it out, but I don't. I mean, it, it didn't was really that, help them to do other things. Technically, with Xbox One wasn't that why Samsung named the Note? They just went from five to seven with the Note, so they would make people so it would have the same number as the iPhone Seven at the time. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, I think that's why they did that. Too. They, <laughs> and then the it lit on some weird stuff. Yeah, it exploded. Yeah, uh, and, and then the phone exploded, <laughs> and that's the phone I unbox. And that's the phone I unbox shirtless, by the way. Nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it all comes uh, full circle. Joshua says, "A little late, but Miss Click, I'm super glad you're a regular now. Yay, Rich Aww. is here. Happy New Year, Spawncast. Yay, hey, guys. Thank you." Cheers. Wolverine says, uh, graphics have stopped mattering, just games now. Okay. No, I'm, I'm a graphics, so I love graphics. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. I want to I wanna, I wanna get to that moment where I'm like, oh, I can't tell if the TV show is. But why can't you have a good game and good graphics all at once? You exactly. can. Exactly. Exactly right. right. All right. <laughs> there we go. Uh, why not both? Uh, Straw Man says, we have the Xbox One S and soon the Xbox Series X shaped like a PC. When will we get an Xbox? Box SSX shaped like a snowboard. <laughs> Can we get another one of those games already? I just got that. I just got that game on the GameCube the other day from a Dude, store around here. Tricky. 1080 was better. 1080 was better. Oh what? Oh, I love Tricky. Tricky was oh. awesome. That was during. I that was played during crap at a 1080. 1080 Avalanche. Oh, but that was during the, the years of man. EA Big, and oh, yeah. they were killing. That had such a good soundtrack too. I did like 1080 yeah. though. That was a legit game. Yeah, dude uh been uh kyle says been waiting for uh review tech usa to be on this podcast forever he's been on before thank he's you been on he's on the shirt he is yeah, on the shirt on the yeah. shirt <laughs> uh doctor says i'm late to the stream has uh rich asked miss click yet someone said it in my live stream I'm like, what the hell are you talking about i had no idea what they were talking <laughs> about everything everything been laughing. Taking out of context it's one of our Rich. major everything freudians I say, <laughs> no, no, it's not. no matter how i said it it would have been bad <laughs> God. Uh, it's it's the worst. Worst. Well, it's people show. did that. People freaked out on Twitter <laughs> last night because I said, "Because I like to sleep with fans on me." Because I just, I, you know, I don't care. Oh I no! Stuff. And I said, and I said on Twitter, I like to have two fans blow on me while I sleep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Just gently behind the ear. <laughs> you like to have your fans blow you? I'm like, no, 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 fans with air. Oh man. <laughs> oh, <dear>. uh, <laughs> Uh, Br Bradley says, Happy New Year, Spawncast. Special shout out to MVG. I'm Aussie based in Melbourne. Hey, uh, any Australia anyone facts. attending PAX Australia <laughs> in the future? In I'd the love future, to go to maybe. PAX Australia. Hmm. If I'm there at the same time. If you're there at the same time, Jordan, is that what he said? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not easy to just get over to Australia. Uh, Doctor says, Do you guys have a favorite bad game that you enjoy? Favorite mm, bad favorite game, like bad guilty game. pleasure, or like it's so well, bad. Sean, I'll say Sean, Sean's not here, so we can't say Deadly Premonition. Um, that's but, not a bad game. Apparently, <laughs> I mean, if that's the, I mean, I thought that was a bad game because of its rating. No. So, so what? then I, so well, then I guess I can't say Jedi Outcast then, Nate. <gasps> that's a bad game by my perception. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. Turning gotcha. Point Fall of Liberty is awful, but it's so awful that it's entertaining. <laughs> Oh, yeah. it is Mario, Sunshine. Mario Sunshine. I can't say it because I don't enjoy <gasps> Sunshine. It's just bad. Why you gotta, a, why you gotta a, bring up Mario Sunshine like that, man? Jeez. You're, you're a degenerate. Leave Mario Sunshine alone. 
What about wow. uh, Devil's Third? Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, oh, next thing, next, thing, next thing you know, you're going to say Star Fox Zero. Oh, man. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Whoa. Star Fox Zero is not a terrible game. I mean, it ain't great. <laughs> it is not a bad game. It it's not, it's not on the it's good, a, on the good, good spectrum. Game. It's such a good game. I, people were buying it at five below the other, last year. <laughs> Bought eight copies for 40 bucks. <laughs> That's a good deal. That's yeah, a good deal. <laughs> 64 was crappy too. That's a great deal. My if my if my table starts to slant on one leg, I got like eight copies of Star Fox Zero. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> my, my <table's, laughs> but oh I got it. Hold on. <laughs> uh, I don't know what deal. Actually, you know what? No, the um the deal with uh, Starlink was by far better at six dollars. Best Buy got those down to six dollars. Yeah, that's that's insane. They really cannot get these things off the shelf. Wing, they're trying. They had a ten, and they're like, no one's buying these. Oh man, and they're six bucks. That is that's a good deal actually for that. It game. was a fun game, I guess. Yeah, I recently. bought it for seventy. Mm. I, I bought it for ten on Black Friday. It didn't, it didn't Dude, interest I... me. It was, I just it was fun. It was like a it was like a, a good game, but it was like, you know, and I really wanted to support it. Like the devs were super nice and like they sent, you know, all this stuff for me to help promote it. And people who, who played it, you know, like I gave them access to play it. They loved it, but it was like there wasn't like a drive to really go out and buy it. And I think it should have been just a Switch exclusive. It yeah, they should have just gone full Star Fox with that. But yeah, the Star Fox portion was great. The main, I mean, Sean touched on it already, but the main characters, you know, like kind of like them, hell. but you're like, give me my, where my Star Fox boys? Yeah, and then I, they're like in the background, you're like, ah! Yeah, so I never learned the characters' names or anything. I just didn't care. It was just like, we'll do Star Fox. I mean, the game itself wasn't bad. It was a little tedious it's at quick, times, but yeah. I mean, I played through it and I was like, all right, it, it could have been better if it was all Star Fox. That's that's all I wanted to do in the game. So, hey, maybe they bring in Ubisoft and that's their next I Nintendo Ubisoft day, yeah. collaboration is them letting yeah. them do a Star Fox game. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool if they did that. I think another game that was pretty terrible, but I didn't really mind was Cruising USA on the Nintendo 64 <laughs> when that came out. Uh, <laughs> I is remember it, that. <laughs> it was kind of fun. <laughs> it was I, terrible, I, but it was fun. Wasn't that like nothing? That was like nothing like the arcade one, right? Yeah. Oh, that was the nothing, whole. I, nothing like it. That was a bad <laughs> port. That was a bad port. Oh no! I used to man. play Muscle as a kid on the NES, and that game was terrible. But for some reason, I played the hell out of it. That and Deadly Towers, I played a lot, and that game mm. sucked too. Uh, M- Mitticus says, "Do you believe we will ever see another price increase in physical games with needing larger media for physical games? Games used to be forty nine ninety nine. Yes." <laughs> Yeah, games are also expensive back yeah, then. Yeah, they were also like sixty dollar yeah. and seventy dollar. There were a couple games. I think some of the art, like Chrono Trigger, I think released at seventy five or eighty dollars yeah. when it came out. There, yeah, there were a few eighty dollar. I think even some ninety dollar N sixty four games. Yeah, yeah, there was no set standard back. Wasn't then. Fantasy Wild Star West. for the Sega Master System insanely expensive too? If I remember, I, I remember. Know. I remember RPGs that needed like those big like mask ROMs. Those are usually the more expensive games, and it was it was such a pain too. And the battery backup and stuff that was newer yeah. tech back then. I think that was pretty. It was well beyond what we would expect to pay now for a vanilla you know game without any like dlc or anything i thought a little about this because next generation with ps5 and the series x they're gonna have 100 gigabyte blu-ray discs and those are gonna be more expensive than the current ones so i feel like if they're not gonna increase it we will get more microtransactions or service-based stuff next generation then yay great yeah i love it so it's either so good goes to 70 or they or you get a lot more i'll pay them more the internet <laughs> i'll pay them uh, more money yeah i'd pay seven i mean it, it you know it depends on the game like i'm not buying madden for 70 bucks i'm just not buying madden yeah well yeah but... <laughs> <laughs> well i mean we also have to think standard like inflation and stuff like that like it's probably mm-hmm. going to go up but at the same time i mean if people are going to be more digital like that might be kind of a i mean there's some games people pay bargain like, point. jordan how much is your final Fantasy seven remake going to cost you <laughs> like 330 <laughs> okay so see, some some people already paying that money <laughs> Ooh, oh boy. Damn. i wanted that collect listen i wanted to get one or two collector's editions of someone on a bike in the cyberpunk one sold out quick so i got the final fantasy it's, one it's this bike, and then, man and then literally like this bike. literally like two months ago the cyberpunk one restocked. the cyberpunk one restocked on best buy and i pre-ordered that one too see dude you were, you, were, you were all about I want the bikes 
dude, you're all about Astral Chain for the first 15 minutes. That was the all first 15 there, minutes, huh? solid. If that was the game, 10 out of 10 game of the year. Oh, but then man. you get off and it's like, then you get off the no, here, okay. here's, here's, a, here's like a pet sword guy who doesn't know how to do anything. <laughs> Thanks, Astral Chain. You sold God, me live. Dang it, Jordan. I just want motorcycle. Give me more Cyanar or Wild Hearts. Oh, uh, yeah, oh my God. All right. <laughs> so, Swag says uh, Fantasy Star Online 2 is about 60 gigabytes. Oh, I think friend, uh, she made her leave. That's fine. <laughs> I think uh, I think Fantasy Star Online 2 will just be a download because it's free to play. So it'll just, it'll just be yeah. something we download. And apparently it's going to all the platforms. So it'll be on Xbox first and I guess PC. And then it'll go to PS4 or PS5 and Switch, I guess. Um, so that'll be that'll be interesting to see that when that happens. Everyone needs to check it out, though, because it's actually a cool game, but it's never really it's never come over here. So um, Dr. Claw says, here's a thought. Maybe the 64 gigabyte cartridge switch cartridge here because Breath of the Wild 2 is going to need it. Mm. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I think, I think Nintendo will get that, that thing, will, that thing will probably be, Breath of the Wild 2 will probably be like 15 or 16 gigabytes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Breath Nintendo of the Wild no- is about 14 gigs. It's they Nintendo compress. Nintendo increased well. the size four times. Yeah, they're, they're, Nintendo's good at really getting big games on, uh, with small cartridges. Like, how I much was Odyssey? Was, it wasn't Odyssey I was about to bring up Odyssey. Small? That was five gigabytes. I remember when they, Jesus. when that showed up on the eShop. People freaked out because they thought the games would be bad because it was too small. Like the file size was too small. People were and like, "There's not gonna be much here." Luigi's Mansion Three was like six. It was six and a half yeah. gig. I mean, they're, they're really good at, at that game. At, looks really good on the Switch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, think, light, the lighting on that game is impressive. I think the only Nintendo made game that's over sixteen gigabytes is Smash Brothers. Well, yeah. I mean, the amount of music and like sound, like yeah, soundtracks and that's due that to the music insane. and everything else on it. But every other release Nintendo's put out has. Hmm. probably has come in below 16 gigs yeah they know what they're doing not bad uh the, the icarus says maybe the third parties could make switch exclusive or switch exclusive games instead of porting games for instance ea could allow intelligent systems to make a star wars game with fire emblem three houses style gameplay wow that's <laughs> what that's an, that's an interesting i, I mean all right <laughs> sure all right. okay Hey, I don't, you know, I don't think creative. Do I don't think they'll do that though because it, it's the the companies now when they make a game they just want to be able to just slap it on whatever platform without you know so they need some incentive from generally the parent company like Nintendo would have to be like hey let's do let's do something with Star Wars on just the Switch or, or let's go to EA and have them make a terrible FIFA game for us let's they would get, have to fork over the cash money yeah well the last get, FIFA game was really bad for the Switch by the way. So. Go ahead, let's, go get, ahead, let's get Fact of Five back and, and have a Star oh, Wars let's go. Uh, yep, yep. collection. Yeah, yeah. Rogue, let's do Rogue Squadron. Let's Rogue go. Squadron. Oh, that'd be amazing. They made miracles happen on the N64. Yeah. And oh, the GameCube. Oh, the GameCube. It looked, oh, it looked insane. Like, if you go back and play it now, even through the, um, the HDMI adapter on the GameCube, I think it looks like a 360 game. Yeah. Oh, wow. Crazy. I've never played that. Oh, Rogue Squadron. The um, Rogue Squadron 2, I think. Rogue Leader. Is that the one I'm yep. thinking of? Yep. Oh, I love that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rogue Squadron 2 was amazing. Um, and that was crazy because back then, that's when we made the the switch over to like DVDs and mini DVDs and all that. So they they had it so that when you blow up the Death Star and you're flying away from it in space, it like seamlessly cuts to the movie scene of the Death Star exploding. Whoa. It was really, really cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, if you have it on the GameCube, go check it out and play. I think it's only like 10 bucks anyway, but it's a good game. I mean, you're the uh, GameCube guy. Hey. GameCube is a good system. You're the GameCube guy. You're, the, you're collecting hardcore for it now. I am. I am. I have some more stuff I have to do a video on soon. I have like 20 games I just have sitting in the corner I need to do a video on. Do it. Yeah. Uh, Paddle says, "What? what's up, my man, Rich? Also, I want New yeah. Vegas on Switch. We got Skyrim, so why not? Hey, Outer Worlds coming. <laughs> if they could do Outer Worlds, they could do New Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Outer Worlds is coming. Look, look, uh, check that out if you like. If you want a Fallout game to play, it's, they'll uh, they'll need to remaster it or something. Because I've gone back and played New Vegas, and it doesn't look very good anymore. It's <laughs> it needs it needs a facelift. Mm, it Outer Worlds. Facelift. Outer Worlds. If you want Fallout, go check there that one out when it shows up. I'm gonna be curious how that goes because it's ver is Virtuos doing that. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yes. So they seem uh, they seem to be pretty good at at getting these games over. So we'll be curious to see what they what they uh, what they can do there um and i think we'll i think we'll we'll move over to some of the topics and we'll come back and finish up on the super chats uh before we finish up here evan do we have a, a another discord question uh, a couple more okay. biggest unannounced nintendo game next year 
Oh, unannounced. Oh, that's releasing next year or that's getting announced next year? That's all it says. So we can <laughs> okay. choose the rules how we feel. Interpret, uh, interpret it. Okay. I'm about to bring hope to a bunch of Nintendo fans here. Okay. If you say Mother 3, I <laughs> no, 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 no. I think Pikmin 4 is finally getting announced next year. Oh, uh, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's not really. That's it's not too risky. Oh, we're doing risky stuff. That's... Oh, okay. In that case, I think Mother Three is going to get packaged for a retail release. Oh God! Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I was trying to keep it, you know, within reason here, man. Yeah, if we're going crazy, you know. Bully Two Resurrected Switch uh, exclusive. There we go. <laughs> uh, uh, mark it down. Scale bounds on the way. I want to say F Zero, but even I can't. Oh yeah, you know, say that with, that. even I can't say that with a straight face without just thinking that's just not going to happen. Deep Down's oh. found a new home on the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> what Deep Down's back? <laughs> Deep down's buried. Maybe I'm surprised no one no one thought of a new Paper Mario game. Maybe they'll do that. Ooh. Try yeah, to ruin that. Try to ruin that series a bit more. I want oh. cardboard Mario. I would like them to just go back and just just give, take inspiration from the GameCube Thousand Year Door. Go do that. Mm. If they're not going to remaster that one, which they won't, because we all want that. So but. what about another Mario Kart? Happen. Mario Kart's been a massive seller for them. How about the next Mario Kart? Ooh, an actual, yeah, there you go. An actual, not just the same game from the... I would uh, love it. Game. I'm yeah. sick of eight. Uh, that yeah. would be really, Splatoon really cool. Splatoon 3. Mario Splatoon 3. <laughs> I don't think we need Splatoon 3 until next year, man. I think that's a I once in a generation thing. No, Splatoon I, yeah. 3. Next year. It's next year. Oh, gosh. No, you know, MVG, I like that. Mario Kart 9. It's time. As a as a holiday 2020 launch, that'd be a good way yeah. to take away some wind out of the sales of Sony oh, and Microsoft too. Big time, mm. big time. Or they just hit or, it with the Mario Party treatment, just call it Mario know, Kart. You know what else it's time for? <laughs> it's time for another 3D Mario game. 3D yeah. World. We said or you or Odyssey too, right? World, yeah. To get another, to get an at least announced, even if it's not coming out this year, as announced at like E3 or a, or a later direct or something in the year. Another 3D Mario. I can't believe we cool. skipped the most obvious thing. What's that? Metroid Prime. Oh trilogy my gosh! Here we go with, with the Prime trilogy. With a parlay stuff. of a new 2D Metroid. Uh, Whoa! Don't bring I up see, You realize I stay away from that Metroid Prime trilogy talk, right? <laughs> and he's just bringing it up. You know what? Hey. Yeah, fine. Metroid Prime trilogy this year. I'll give you. I'll give you the month. Hold on. Uh, Gotta pull up your press release real quick. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> it also says Chameleon Twist three September, so that's going to be great. Uh, so the I guess the direct is in January, right? Otherwise, then Sean has to eat Mitch, so we'll put it in January for him. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't expect trilogy to be announced in January. No, okay, fine. We'll say it gets announced at E three November, then it, and then I'll give it uh, September eighteenth. September. Okay. Metroid Prime Trilogy. There you go. <laughs> Wait, does the 2D Metroid S come out this year too? No, it'll just be announced. Okay. And right. That would actually be a big deal because that would be like a new series to a lot of people because that was mm -hmm. you know, on the GameCube and Wii. So that, that would be like new games and that would be another way to take mm -hmm. some wind out of Sony and Microsoft sales. Mm -hmm. That would be... Um, that would... Yeah, when well, we Prime get Nintendo... Trilogy, yeah. Nintendo dogs. <laughs> next year is going to be long, next year is going to be interesting, man. If if uh, Nintendo's really in like their you know hitting their stride in their third year is like their big like all these big games coming out. Bayonetta three should come out too. And I then, said it before. Twenty nineteen was the year where impossibilities became reality, and twenty twenty is going to be the year of miracles. Oh, here we go. Mm. So what's twenty twenty one then? 2020 is going to be your the empty wallets when I kick you. <laughs> but, but you're probably going to see me in a couple, two, two months. Why'd you kick me then? I'll wait until Pax East 2021 to kick you. <laughs> That's a lot of anticipation. That's a lot of build up and promise. I mean, I hear, I hear a lot of, uh, I hear a lot of uh, uh, alluding to Scalebound getting announced. So that's good to hear. Oh, finally. 2020. All right, cool. Hey, that's yeah. a, that's an impossibility, right? It's the year of miracles. Miracles. Yeah, it. It's the year Happening. of miracles. Crocs coming back from the dead, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking with Mario Kart. That's my pick. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick I with. A, I'm gonna go I'll with a 3D, Mario Kart. I'm gonna go with a 3D Mario. I don't know if it's gonna be called uh, Odyssey Two or some other thing, or maybe they do like Galaxy Three or something. But I, I maybe it's just new Mario. But what if they just put 3D World? That's what I was just about to say. Yeah, yeah. they could do that too. They could. Nate, hey, don't you owe or, like Scott a five dollars or something? <laughs> no. 
put <laughs> put on put almost the final nail in the coffin of the Wii U. I swear you told yeah, him. I, 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 you know he's gonna be on this yeah. podcast and in, in, in eventually again, right? Yeah, and probably by the time he's on, the game will probably be announced. How do you know he won't be on in a, in a couple of weeks? Well, then hopefully there's a direct by then. It's <laughs> <laughs> then RGT yeah, won't have to eat Mitch. It'll all work out. You got oh, shit. Man, I have to weigh those, those two options. Shadow. I want to see Sean eat a plant. <laughs> or pay Scott $5. <laughs> He's going to do it haphazardly. He's it's going to be like a great half year. A bite. Oh, man. Yeah, Sean's going to eat like half a leaf. He like, said he was going to eat a leaf. Just plant. like his Just Dance video. That was not satisfying at all. <laughs> I need to see more. <laughs> 3D see Land more. too, yeah. That's oh, another. 3D Land, yeah. They can do all kinds. That'd of be stuff. a nice remaster. That'd be a nice remaster. Or they so, go up. They continue 3D Land, 3D World, well, 3D Galaxy, Galaxy Three. <laughs> while we're on the while we're That's on the top, quite the connection. <laughs> it, but it's a connection. <laughs> while we're while we're on the topic of uh, the Switch going into into next generation, that was kind of a IGN did a video on it. I saw a couple other places do do write ups on it as well. Mostly the concern about the Switch and where it'll be when the PS5 and the Xbox series x release in uh, holiday 2020 i think most people believe november 2020 is when the systems will come out probably a week apart or something like the uh it's like last did, time like yeah. they did last time yeah exactly yeah uh so that that's most likely what's going to happen a lot of people are concerned that after that i guess going into 2021 throughout that year that the switch will uh struggle heavily seemingly it, it seems to be third party games people are pointing out if I'm not mistaken, as to why it would struggle. Um, so, what do you what do you guys think would would happen with the Switch? I guess when the next generation starts up, and uh, I guess how long until Nintendo would then maybe move into next generation on their own terms after that? Well, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Miss Click. Go ahead. I was just saying, I think it's hard to fathom, like if they're gonna stick to the handheld as they are, if they're gonna change it up. Like I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's hard to predict with them. Mm. Okay. Because okay. that could completely change it. I think um, as long as Unreal Engine 4 is still the ah, game engine, which it <laughs> is, there is no plans for Unreal Engine 5, at least at this point. Maybe there will be a couple of years into the next gen. I think the Switch is in a very, very comfortable position to take on anything that comes out uh, so over the next couple of years. Yeah, They'll just have to whittle down the games to stay within the limitations of the hardware, yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah, it's basically the third party situation is not going to radically change compared to what we have today for the Switch's third party situation. Indies are still going to come. Double A efforts from like T THQ Nordic will still come. Ports and remasters hey, will still come. Hey, keep an eye on THQ Nordic, man. Tell them to keep an eye on them. But the Switch already misses out on a lot of triple A third party support. You're not getting Call of Duty. You're not getting support from EA. You're typically missing out on a lot of stuff outside of Call of Duty from Activision and Blizzard. So that's still going to be the trend even after the PS5 and Xbox Series X. So Western support isn't going to change all that much. Japanese studios are always very slow to adapt to a new generation. So this could play in Nintendo's favor when Sega and Atlas are looking to continue supporting the current gen. They're going to see Nintendo's bases there. So maybe you'll have a little more of that Falcom support that you're kind of seeing due to NS nsia america forcing it on them hmm. so it's nothing's really going to change you're still going to miss out on a lot of those big games like resident evil 3 and i mean that's just the reality of being a nintendo platform was uh yeah was mortal kombat 11 like the was that like the big third party game that released day and date like what was another big uh... one well, Crash Team. Oh. I mean, are we like is Crash Team Racing considered big? Uh, I mean, I guess that was a well, that was, was a, what, a forty dollar release. Game? Yeah, I'm thinking of like that that big sixty triple A game that comes out. Was Mortal Kombat 11 like that was the one? Yeah, day and date. But well, on the fl uh, on the flip side of that, though, it, it, the Switch has been receiving more third party support than Nintendo's received in a real long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. So this far into its life, it's yeah. Because after time, after like the first like half a year on the Wii U, they, they just they just left. Everyone just left. Barely, but everyone over. just like got the hell out of there on that thing, man. Like yeah, yeah he was watch socks. Even, even like before that, like the, the Wii, yeah, okay, it had third party support, but a lot of it was shovelware, and even the good stuff wasn't supported the way that the third party devs wanted it to be. You know, mm. I think Wolfenstein Two or Youngblood was. Well, that, young, young, young blood, young, 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 young blood, blood. Yeah. young blood was their day and date as well. Yeah, that was a thirty dollars game. I'm thinking yeah. of like, 
That game was young shit. Like too, we even thank you. It's, it's so bad. It was a lie. Like, we think, game was a like, lie. Doom Eternal isn't going to launch day and date on the Switch, which was surprising no, no. to me because I thought that was going to before they. I thought not? they were. Yeah, I thought initially. Uh, <gasps> Doom sixty four day and date though. There we oh, go. Finally, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's. Uh, I think. I think their strategy for what they're doing now is correct they said they want to compete on install size and next gen install size is a reset whereas the switch i'm pretty confident at the end of january the switch is going to report a number that might surprise some people like i i think it's going to be in the 50 millions which might which might be shocking to some people but it I, it has pretty much passed the xbox one at this point already it has so, already yeah yeah so when we get into the next gen systems launching the switch very well could be over 60 million sitting there before the holidays and that would I be mean, nuts at that point you just put your game you get your games there because there are people there to sell to so it's like a stall it's size will bring the will bring the games so and at that point you'll guarantee that third party devs will find a way to shoehorn even next gen games on the switch i can mm. see that yeah especially like mvg is saying unreal engine 4 being the 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 driving you know engine for a lot of these games yeah you'll they see them you'll see them do some wild stuff to do it <laughs> they will they will like curb two, stop them on there <laughs> but to mvg's point if we're still going to have a lot of cross-gen games within the first year and yes. if a lot of those games are going to use unreal engine 4 then the scalability will still leave switch open to getting some of these games like people will say oh kingdom hearts 3 final fantasy 7 remake yes those games use unreal engine 4 but what those games have going on is way beyond a case of simple scaling can get those to the Switch. They have way too much happening. So those type of games will not be scaled back to a Switch release, but more of the smaller, still decent games. Like we could still see Namco decide to port over Dragon Ball Kakarot. Probably a year do. late because that's yeah. been their trend. Oh, that game's out in like three weeks. Sweet. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right, good. I'm ready for that game. Yeah, I hope they do bring that to the Switch. That'd be good. Even if it's like uh, like Dragon Ball Fighters late, where it's like, you know, like, like you said, like... Yeah, that was about, late. what, eight months? Yeah, if it's like that late, yeah, I think it's still worth picking up. I mean, I'll be able to tell you in like three weeks, I'm grabbing that thing immediately. But uh, even if they do that, I mean, at this point, Nintendo pretty much has Japan completely covered. Like this last report that they put in, the, the Nintendo was the top 10 games. There was nothing else in the... Like Sony wasn't in the top 10 at all. Correct. No, I, we, what days gone didn't do good there <laughs> oh my God. that's a good thing <laughs> the ps4 in japan if i'm right oh yeah that was a that was a while ago too now ago. now we're looking at the switch like outselling the 3ds and you know a, a year or two at this point so Can we get jump on the do we jump force on the switch? Shut up, Fred. It's about time, damn it. It was up for an award, oh, man. man. Come on. Yeah, that could have been the best fighting game of the year, okay? Oh. Yeah, it would have been the best fighting game of the year if no other fighting that, game. That is, that is that is a, a game award no, a, a nominee, Jump Force. You say that from now on, okay? Game oh, award nominee, gosh. Jump Force. Oh. Bring it back. Let me... <laughs> Let me uh let me go let me go back through some of these super chats. Um we'll finish up here in a bit after we go through uh actually quite a few of them here. Evan, we still have some Discord how many Discord questions do we have left? One. Oh, very good. All right, you want to hit us with that and then we'll move into super chats. It's kind of basic, but why are streamers okay. moving to Facebook gaming? They know that it's killing their viewer numbers, right? Money. It's money. money. It's money. They're getting money. Listen, if you can secure your savings and your life outside of streaming to where you have to stream less and not rely as much on subs or concurrent views or any monetary value that you will get based off of that, why wouldn't you take it? But have we heard about the monetary yeah. income from Facebook being like to the mixer tier of like ridiculous numbers? Or yeah, is it like. I mean, the Facebook's I mean, also they're, paying they're, out very well for these people. Yeah, it's going to be proportional. Right. And the first people that you're going to be seeing are going to be like very high for those specific people's standards. But, you know, after that, they kind of tend to trickle down. But the whole point is to try to get attention. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, not like... It's when when their contract ends, that's when it's gonna matter. Like, do they do they really try to go back in and try to revive and move somewhere else, or are people just gonna be like, Dude, ah, I'm not gonna follow you everywhere, you know? Yeah, like, that's their just end game. in one place. Yeah, I mean, you have to figure out. It, like, is is this final payout really gonna be worth the possibility of you being associated with a brand thus far, 
or you just following a paycheck and everybody knows it. Like you really have to have those fans behind you that are like, listen, you do you, we'll support you, but it's the internet. Is that really going to happen? You know fans I mean? are fickle, man. They don't want to yes. move anywhere. Yes. <laughs> they don't uh, want to move a damn place. You're right. T. Joe says, what if I told you this super chat was brought to you by Cutting Edge Cucumber? <laughs> There you, you know you're gonna get like five more of those before <laughs> Kira says this one from spawncast to rich cast is that oh is rich is the uh the large window the big square yeah uh there we go all right very cool uh maybe uh, uh the the point is, this is from uh pot belly punch saying the point is that mastery of some of these old games can be fun uh slash fulfilling and worth trying not all games deserve the attention or time to master it that is true. All right. I get what he's saying. Uh, Jack says, chances we get a Mario Rabbids sequel. You know, I would like to see that. 75%. How did, the, how did the first one sell? I don't even know numbers of that. It's that dude, like the best-selling pretty third good. party Switch That game. did like 3 million yeah. copies or something, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, then we'll get one then. That's it. It'll happen. Wine is Ubisoft needs, uh, needs another hit. That was, I mean, that was, a, that was a good game, though. I actually liked that one it a lot. It was a good game. I enjoyed yeah. it. I almost bought it the other day. <laughs> it was like 15 bucks that's what i'm saying i almost bought it yeah it is worth 15 bucks i i, I just forgot oh no, let's tell you i have a motorcycle it. that's a that's a good that's game true. you can play on the on the um on the on the treadmill jordan that's a good game you can play on there because it's like it's we'll like xcom we'll yeah. see we're doing we're on the ring fit kick right now but we'll see if okay. we can add another game to the mix <laughs> that one, it's good game <laughs> <laughs> it is good and it's a ubisoft game that has a definitive beginning and a definitive end what it's not an always online service and that is correct <laughs> crazy <laughs> wow wait do i have to go to a tower and unlock a map no. no. Okay. Ooh, all right. wow. this, did, Ubisoft, yeah, right? did Ubisoft even make this game? Like, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a weird time now. I mean, I was just playing Need for Speed by EA and it has no microtransactions. In it. Yo, what? Yeah. And it's been a month since it came out and nothing. Yeah, yet? I know, right? That's what I said. There's no microtransactions wow. in Fallen Order yet either, are there, Jordan? This is this is cra- this is unbelievable. <laughs> what era are we in in gaming? Uh, we have made it past the hard parts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Kiro Tengetsu says Ape Out is one of the best indie games I've played 2019. <laughs> uh, Mega Nerd says, think we could get could see Guilty Gear Strive on Switch. Probably not. A bunch of the Guilty Gear games have gone to the Switch, but Evan, you were concerned about the, um, I guess, the online population, how that would I mean, up. that if it's going to sell, it's going to sell. It almost doesn't matter to yeah. them, but it's more a matter of do they want to put it on there. I, if it goes to Switch, it's probably not going to have a community of more than like mm-hmm. 100 people online at any point in time, but yeah. Okay. Uh, there's only been what? There's only been two guilty gears go to switch and they were like the 10th what were they, there the 20th was there was the cross tag one and that one had like 40 people online second day and that was it <laughs> it wasn't the cross tag wasn't that bad that was blast blue wasn't it oh yeah it was well that's i, I bundle all their fighting games into one yeah. it's basically the same <laughs> I think, thing i think the only guilty gears were the it was guilty gear double x and then the original guilty gear from the ps1 because they uh, don't seem interested in bringing that series anywhere but the PS4. Brad says, hey, Jordan, Sonic guy here. <laughs> you know the drill at this point. So, Sonic. Hey, did you see uh, Baby Sonic? Everyone's a baby now. What? What? What do you, you don't like Sonic, right? That's the idea here? What do you mean? I didn't say anything about it. I just said I have opinions on Sonic. Tell I've never said opinion. what they are. I just said I have opinions. Oh, you Your... said them, just not on air. You I said them. Let me that on one it. time that it's overrated or something. Let me check this. Over... I've never <laughs> even used that word in my life. Over <laughs> what? What? No, never said anything like that. Obviously, I would never say anything like the majority, if not all, Sonic <laughs> games are terrible. I would never say anything like that. Oh, That's stupid. Man. I would never say that on the internet, especially on a podcast with three thousand people watching. I would never say that uh, at all. Uh, mm, mm, uh, maybe you'll just never find out this opinion. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, <laughs> uh, Next. Okay. Jo- Johnny R says, glad to see uh, Rich. I'm a fan of everyone on the show. Very Thank cool. you. Uh, Gerson Jr. says, just went back to Fire Emblem instead of playing my other RPGs on the backlog. I have games like Nino Kuni Remastered and Octopath Traveler. Octopath will take you a bit. Yeah. Nino like... Kuni's that's a good one, though, to pick up and play. That's Pokemon. It's a good game. I like that one. 
I played on the PS3. It was very good. It was like 25 bucks, I think, over the, the holiday. Um, I grabbed it on I grabbed it on Amazon for like 25 bucks on the Switch. Um, Zaire Miller says, what would be your ideal video game TV show? Mine would be a, a new animated Zelda TV show. Oh, God, I remember the old one. It was always a, they had it for the Mario Brothers Super Show, but it was oh, on Fridays. Man. Could it be done by the guys that did the recent Thundercats? That's how you know I'm old as shit. I used to watch the Mega Man animated show on TV. Oh, I like that one. That was actually that, yeah, was, that actually was a good one. A good show. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, what would be your ideal? I, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing it. I think the Metroid universe would be really interesting to see. See, my, my answer like was similar. Teasers. I that want a Mass movie. Effect show. Yeah. Like a, like a space oh. adventure show where like every episode is them doing kind of like the Mandalorian, how every episode's kind of like here, Mando is just doing something somewhere. It felt like a Saturday morning cartoon, but in live action. You know, so, like I want that with Mass Effect. Nope. Nope. I need to see, uh, I need to see Death Stranding. Not, not the story. That'd be a just movie. The, just That'd the game. Like a seven hour just movie. the gameplay. Ten series, would, ten episode would, series. Just the game. Would that be a series <laughs> or a movie? Though? That, would, that would just be a really long movie. Well, they've already made a movie. Why not make a TV series? Does it? Does All it right. mad? Fair I'm still gonna take it out of the damn cellophane. I haven't. Do it time. already, you coward! You have, oh, wait, hold on. Do you tell it. him, dude? If he doesn't have time to open that thing, that thing is forty hours minimum. It's like he hasn't great. even opened. He just eats. It's, it's at least open. eight hours before you really enjoy it. If you're wanting a hack and slash, it's not that rich. But if you're if you're wanting if you, something, dude, to if like, you just gotta if you just gotta relax, like after a, after a day, right? And you just want to sit down and relax, and play a game like that. That's not like all over the place. That that's a good one to, to go through. Rich will, probably, get, Rich will play the game. He'll get connected to one of those hubs where there's like zip lines everywhere and like beat the game in like three hours. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> I just want uh, to see Norman Reedus drink a Monster Energy drink. That's all. Oh, he hey, drinks. He yeah, gets attractive. He gets not gonna lie. Quick, what a way. weird sponsorship to have. It's like what's, what's really strange is when you get further in the game, they take it out. It's it's unrealistic no, that it didn't disappear for me. It, it, oh, it, it does at one point like, though, depending on what yeah. you do. It's depending on a side mission. It can. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a other substance. Is it beer? Or is it another type of drink? I'm it's not something sure. else. I think it's a it's, different energy drink. Almost Almost like a monster, like coffee. There's almost yeah, look like I was like, yo, really? they're doing brands in here now. <laughs> I just wish it was realistic. Listen, you like, he has six monsters on a table, and you drink all six, and you don't die. That's not realistic. You can't drink six monsters back to back and go, mm, and be Dude, fine. He's a repatriate. He can do whatever the. Psh, hell unrealistic. Is. Zero out of ten. Worst game I've ever played in my life. On Christmas <laughs> Day, yeah. Did you see? Did you see? Worst game you've ever played, Fringe. Did you guys see on Christmas Day how all the NPCs were wearing Christmas hats? Except for oh, Jeff so Keeley's. He didn't have one in the game. Yeah. Oh, that was weird. very strange. Yeah, so Rich, you start that you, up. You want to have two go. hours set aside because the opening cutscene is like 90 minutes. Yeah, and oh, then at the oh, end, no. too. Goddamn Kojima. <laughs> oh. It's great, though. It's enthralling. I'm I'm opening opening it now. That's I'm on the back of the box. Now, it says so right there. It says enthralling. ASMR. Just clicked. <laughs> what <laughs> that's the quote on the back of the box it says it's enthralling and it says dash misclick underscore live i mean you can do that that's fine oh man uh, uh cedric says how big of a deal would it be if bungie uh got the rights back to the halo franchise made a new oh. halo game would it break the internet my heart yes, it, it would, would totally be it still would completely my break the internet it broke oh the internet when they got when they retained the rights for destiny oh there you go <laughs> that was a big deal um that they got that from activision um but so they need to hey. save halo man <laughs> Same Halo. Three, four, three, four, three, four, three is. Yeah, I agree. Three, four, three hurt the Halo series. I don't care Dude. what anybody says. Four, four was like okay. I, it, eh. Five is unexcusable dog shit. All right. <laughs> I, I agree. Hold on, hold on, I Jordan. Agree. Hold on, Jordan. Five What's is unexcusable hold dog on. shit. The hold remakes, the remakes like are awful. Jordan, better Jordan, or worse than Sonic? Your... Oh no, no, no! Let me ask you this. <laughs> Jordan. Give me a Sonic game. Jordan, what's your what's your opinion on Halo Five? It's shit. It's crap, dude. What's your opinion on Let the Sonic you. franchise? <laughs> you know what? Let's load up some some Sonic, dude. Let's let's play around. Let's. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, Sonic one that. and two were good. Sonic one and two were good. I'll, 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 I, listen, I'll play a Sonic. If you get if you give me a choice right now, you put Halo Five in front of me, and you picked Sonic, boom, or like Sonic Forces, right? <laughs> I'm probably game. playing a Sonic game that night. That's Sonic all I got to say. I would gladly play that in a heart oh, because at least I'm going to have a so good bad. time with how crappy it is, right? <laughs> with how all, all the, the, the glitches and problems. That's way more fun than just playing a really pretty looking piece of crap, all right? 
Okay. I remember wow. I got a 360. I thought that hey, Sonic. I'm like, oh man, they're gonna dip, be able with the hardware now, be able to do something good with Sonic, and that game was so goddamn. Oh bad. no, Sonic 2006. Uh, Ooh, Sonic 06. Yeah. No. Oh. Yo, can we get a shout of the Hedgehog too? That's gaming. <laughs> Core Sonic says uh, the Leisure Suit Larry uh, is the is this game anyone's <laughs> guilty pleasure? <laughs> it's someone's pleasure. Like Leisure Suit Larry, the series. Wet dreams oh. don't dry is pretty fun on the Switch. <laughs> I forgot there was a Leisure Suit Larry game on the Switch. There I, is, I yeah. completely forgot. Is there about really? That. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Good. I remember when it came out on the original Xbox. That was actually a big deal back then when that happened. And I remember it oh, was that a big game was terrible though. That was yeah. Magnum that was really Kulade. bad. Yeah, it was really that bad. game was trash. Could we just say Nintendo has to find a better way to put like games they release on the Switch, whether it be from them or third party developers? They just dump on a whole oh, bunch of Oh, for the eShop? Yeah, and you miss yeah. them. Yeah, that eShop needs a revamp bad, like really badly. They did add in the auto suggest their own games, though. Like you start typing in a game and it finally will suggest a title versus like standard. Well, it words. used to, it used to pop. That? Well, no, it popped up in the uh, the actual little bar for like words you're typing. It did that from day one. I started typing I and just, it didn't do it for me. What? Did it for me. <laughs> I just think oh, they need to. I just think they it. need to change everything up. Like the the many they have. Organized I thought them. I thought it would change a bit, like at at all when they when they first showed up. I was like, eh, it's the first day of the switch. I go back now and I look at it and I was like, yeah, it's time. It still man. looks the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they need to organize them by like what the ratings and popularity. Like they do a little bit, but not enough. They yeah, just, what's people playing right out. now? That kind of stuff would be great. Yeah, they they just dump out new releases like diarrhea and that's it. For the amount of games that hit that store yeah they need help <laughs> it's a big change. time it's ridiculous um if they can just change it around to be oh you know, nintendo better. they could have an entire section just for indie games that'd be great like a whole indie section and like that would be awesome a, like you log like you sign into the eShop and they have like a banner on the top that's like the top selling eShop uh, indie games now that aren't 99 cents you know <laughs> um that like good be, games like blasphemous get, like good games like blasphemous get missed because they just plop them out there yeah a lot of people didn't even know what that was when i mentioned it in a video at one point i was like the game's actually pretty good yeah it's like um, it's like castlevania and dark souls combined yeah i mean we just saw that game that we were talking about before the one looks like the uh the art little army men from uh n64 and that's probably gonna fly right down the eShop charts randomly so well let's see if it's even good Hey, oh no, I know, but like, right but the track. fact that I just I randomly just found it, and uh, it could be a game that is halfway decent and passes. You know, that's just the way the eShop set up now. It'd be right. like that. I mean, Nate, you tell us about all kinds of weird games that are on the eShop that we've never heard of. And and Nintendo's missing money uh, out of this because if they organized the games better and people bought them more, they would make more off the games. So it, it, they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot to it. Yeah, I mean, we got to a point where uh, companies were or developers were figuring out if they discounted their game enough, they would end up on like certain charts because of that, like just a loophole. But so they ended up making their games like nine cents or something. So, uh, Better oh, than ten cents. J JTT says, as twenty nineteen ends, what's everyone's game of the decade? I think we mentioned that. Did we mention this last week? I think we talked about it. I thought we did last too. week or the week before. We talked about it recently. Yeah, the game of the decade going. I probably said something like a Borderlands something. something. I, thought, I think he said. I thought he said Borderlands three or something. No, probably two. I probably said two over three. I know. Um, it's only it's supposed to be one, but here's my top three. And I don't know what order this is, but it's Mass Effect two, Last of Us, and Breath of the Wild. You said that. You said this last week because I remember you saying yeah. Ma Mass Effect two. Um, yep. Mass Effect two. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's the, the problem with game of the decade is it's very very tough because we're spanning multi yeah, multiple generations gotta, here. Memory mm -hmm. is weird, so I have to go back and look at the at the releases for Enslaved last. Odyssey of the West. I'm sure I'm probably missing other ones I like just as much, but I the one that first pops up is Dying Light with me, which is funny because when I first played it, I actually didn't like, it, but then I fell in love with it. Mm. So I never touched that game because I was like. This just reminds me of how much I hated Dead Island when that came out. So I never it's a it. no, it's like it's like what Dead Island should have been. Just I mean, it looks. I don't. I don't think it looks bad. I just. I just had such a bad taste from Dead, I, too. Dead Island. I was like, I me can't too. touch that. Dead Island was garbage. But oh, this is great! So bad. It might have been because Metacritic put up that list like the uh, best games of the decade or something. I think that's when we talked about it. But uh, I think I think a lot of people were picking Breath of the Wild at the time. Hmm. 
it's just so hard it's a whole decade yeah. like i feel like games have changed so much like you could even do five years and i feel like that would you know like you have to break it up in a way because it's like, hard I'm, to just think of them off the top of my well, head yeah it's... but i'm thinking back like the earliest i could think back to games in 2010 2011 i was playing um Bob i think for me like well yeah but like story wise too like Bob i loved three. skyward sword for that you know and that's like a whole cult following of its own right now but i can't compare that to like games i feel like that have come out in the last couple recent years you know sean uh, skate know. three counts that's 2010 oh nice all right cool that we go. Count, on the list yeah. got it's it on the you're list in. Yeah. you're in <laughs> 2010 was a good year for gaming oh my gosh it really is gonna be 10 years since they released that game i know dude you don't <laughs> understand i was mlg at the game i'm itching to get back into pro gaming now i'm Feels sad bad. about that uh halo right. reach was 2010 wasn't it yes yeah oh, halo. Wow. wow yeah that I remember, counts i remember getting that at midnight release god man i'm old uh agnes says glad to see ricardo here however i'm still waiting for him to pay above average size dairy product yes <laughs> <pesos. laughs> that is that, that is a meme that is almost well now it's going to be revived now that was okay. a 2014 one <laughs> 2014 okay wow yeah. all right going Did back in the memory back. banks on yeah. that all right <laughs> uh uh pape d says uh hey spawn cast keep up good work do you guys think there is a chance microsoft pulls a surprise and drops scale bound as a series x launch title no no probably no. not no definitively no well, what was the I question? Don't, well, <laughs> I don't is microsoft gonna pull a surprise and release scale bound as a series x launch title no <laughs> a little bit more of a laugh there, but yeah. No. Jeez, Nate. <laughs> I was waiting almost, for Nate to come back and say, actually, and then almost like you know stuff actually, is happening with scale bound, and you're just you're just laughing at the idea of it being on the Series X, man. Bruh. <laughs> oh man. No, right. Dead Island is not fun even with friends. <laughs> that's that's for sure, dude. You want a fun game with friends? Go play Border. Scale bound scale bound's in a weird place right now. That's why People don't think it'll be a Series X launch title. Uh, it's in a it's in a weird place called. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's the best way to put it. Oh, I uh, forgot about Amy. Matthew Matthew Hammond says Metal Gear Solid Trilogy HD on Switch with t Twin Snakes. That'd be a, an amazing compilation. I could see that happening too. I can't believe Konami hasn't done that yet. Just bring over like just the Metal Gear Solid two and three, even like they've done with the 360. That um, means they'd need to take in, uh, time and resources away from their pachinko. very profitable pachinko oh and casino business and get back into game development. It's not going to happen. And what was that turd Contra game? They I forgot the full name of it. Oh, I Pro think that's what it was called actually. Oh, no. When I saw that, I'm like, this Pro looks like one. a PS2 game upscaled uh it was it did not go well now i think it was actually no. called turd contra that was it the was, name of the game it was bad but like just bring over metal, the metal gear solid hd collection put it on the switch and be done with it and yes, bring back castlevania triple a game man like have from yeah. software developed. yeah because miss clicks to play shadows. metal gear solid oh did you get that metal gear solid in the did it come in the mail i i just got back in town so i'll have to go look tomorrow okay, but it okay, was okay. it wasn't there even the day after it was supposed to be there it yeah. wasn't in the p.o box so i'm okay. thinking that they were just super packed but... okay cool 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 yeah, so i want to i want to see if it actually came with the the yeah i'm curious too Mm -hmm. it, it might it probably doesn't watch it just being like sleeves with like the ps1 games in there but hopefully yeah. it's the case um then we have uh agnes says miss click you look gorgeous today Thank then we you. have travis saying scale bound switch exclusive with a hashtag uh tesla volta game says zelda hd and 3ds ports need to come to switch in 2020 or 2021 uh, <laughs> ethan r says jordan thoughts on the emperor oh the he, I've, listen anything that ever happens on the podcast on the p podcast is just it's it's like wrestling it's entertaining like there's okay. no hate there's no hate on anyone ever there appears to be some history there with jordan but all right no, no it's 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 from the hosts because we always get into debated topics especially about pokemon visa's fault all the time um, <laughs> okay it's okay. No, it shouldn't matter it's just it's just debates Ethan, Ethan R says, Sean never made a Jumanji video. That was in all caps, by the way. Feels bad. <laughs> Damn artist. He was excited about that game, too. I remember that. I think he was excited because it <laughs> didn't look good. So, 
Uh, Mega Nerd says, for the gazillionth time, I'm replaying Dino Crisis on Dreamcast, and I need this game to get the RE3 remake treatment. You guys feel the same about it? I do, and I think Absolutely. they will. I think they will remake Dino Crisis, actually, the first one. I just got another Dreamcast. I got to get more games for it. All I got is Soul Calibur right now. Yeah, you got to look into that uh, GD Emu. Oh, is that that thing where you could or it, DC like, Emu? I think is what okay. it is. Right, DC Emu. It lets you just put an SD card in and you just load the game. Oh, I heard about that, man. Yeah. That, yeah, that looks awesome. I have one of those because I also uh, did the HDMI DC HDMI mod on it. So this, this Dreamcast has uh, the SD card and HDMI out. So it is. Oh, it, that's sweet. It is sick. It, they even put Wi-Fi in, so it updates its firmware through the Wi-Fi. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh God! Oak, Oak City, Oak City Gamer <laughs> says, "Rich, love the show. Cast is a fun vid on. <laughs> fun vid on. Cast the fun. Uh, I, I need to make an announcement. It's probably going to piss off a lot of people. I, I uh, bought a Google Stadia, and I'm finally going to try it. <gasps> uh, I have one. I got I have the. I, I, yeah. I haven't finished the video on it, but um." It's not great. You're cracking. <laughs> I know. I, everyone's like, give it a shot, Rich. It, it, actually, one person said it last night multiple times. I'm like, fine. One guy yelling really loudly in the back. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I have. Uh, yeah, they've they've done better. I waited a while to do it, and they've become better, like the overall service, <laughs> but it's still not great. Um, so, so that means that Google will drop it in like two weeks. Well, the, supposedly they made it they're so locked in for three years, I think. That's what we're that's what we're hearing. But it sounds like they uh, they at least have made it so you don't have to use the phone to buy a game. You can buy it actually on the service now. Like they're still oh, missing really? a lot of stuff that they said would be finally added, right. So we've got a ways to yeah. go. Oh, and achievements are now live there, so they have that too. Wow! Ooh, is, someone saying Ouya is greater than Stadia, so I mean, oh jeez, it's, it's greater than a doorstop then because that's <laughs> dead. Uh, also, uh, if you're using a Chromecast Ultra. Uh, after playing it for like an hour, go and actually uh, see how hot your Chromecast Ultra is. Place it against your face. You, just, might, be, just, you might be I'll surprised. Just, I'll just <laughs> I'll just put it in a, like a little like one of those little portable refrigerators as I'm using it. I'm telling <laughs> you, I'm telling you, it gets hot. Uh, Shinru says all live service games should be free to play. I think that's actually a, a good way to launch them um, to do it that they way. And An they're still charging money for Anthem. What is that? Five hmm. bucks. Why? Five bucks, man. Why? Five Why? bucks, and I Let's still won't buy it. <laughs> the moment fallout 76 introduced fallout first they should just made fallout 76 free that's my favorite thing to happen this year honest <laughs> <laughs> what's the ridiculousness of them showing up with the subscription listen service? we've made the worst thing possible so to fix it if you give us like money every month we'll promise we'll give you features we should have given you that thing is ten dollars a month that they is the same they seem like they're fast. gonna die with it that's what it feels like they're oh, going out on this hill yeah. and, and it's it's and glorious it's yeah <sighs> Yeah, whatever, uh, man. A few more here. Cameron says, ever, ever since I played through Pokemon Shield, the game stays at the top of my Switch's play activity, even though I've played other games more recently. What's up with that? Any thoughts on a fix? Hmm. Uh, that's a weird one. Yeah, maybe it's a bug they'd have to patch out. I don't know if that's specific with Pokemon or what um, yeah. for that one. Um, I don't know. I haven't had that issue with mine. Uh, Fool of a Max says, did you hear the rumor of Microsoft being in Sweden and possibly buying the studio that made Dying Light? Oh, oh. that's going to be a different rumor that was going around. <laughs> I was going to laugh at what being in the what? Oh, Ooh. them buying a different studio. You were talking what? about you were thinking of them buying like CD Projekt Red. Yeah, I heard of that yeah. thing. And I know that's not I, happening. I I'm, I'm hyped half an hour. I'm hyped for Dying Light too. That that would be an interesting and kind of smart move. Them buying Techland? Yeah. That actually Techland would be needs a some... terrible idea. I wonder if they could make that work. And, I would stick it, they got and I'm hoping that they bring the original Dying Light over to Switch, and that would still make that a possibility, because you know that Nintendo and Microsoft obviously are buddy-buddy. That, that would actually be a cool release, to have the original one just drop on the Switch. I mean, why not? Yeah, because um, they were making it for the 360 and PS3 as mm -hmm. well. They canceled it at the end, but they were, were making it. Yeah, I would actually... I'd be all right with that. That'd be cool um, to see that. You know what? If Microsoft brought in Techland, I, I think I actually think Techland would be okay with that, um, especially since Microsoft's doing a lot of... Uh, well, they're allowing a lot of creative freedom anyway, it seems, for no, we developers. Can. They did, Didn't they do Call of Wars, the, the, the cartel? Wasn't that Techland? I thought Gun... 
Isn't it Gunslinger? Think, no, Cartel did. They did do Cartel, yeah. They have an interesting oh, no. backlog of games. Well, they also did, uh, <laughs> they, they also they did, did Dead Island, Island. Riptide specifically. Which, yeah, yeah, they did oh. Gunslinger as well. Mm. They did Call of Wars Gunslinger. They have right? a great track record. Dead Island is so bad. And it's Island so bad. So Where is that sequel? Is that sequel ever happening? That Dead Island? <laughs> it just I, shouldn't. I, it keeps getting passed around. Teach isn't it THQ Nordic or Deep Silver? Somebody has it now. Who has it now? I don't know. I thought know. it was Deep Silver, which is THQ I just Nordic. remember there was a trailer of jogging and then we is never saw anything after that. That is still happening. I don't well, believe it. Was asking, who Square was Enix has the publishing rights for North America. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we'll Deep stop Silver, it. maybe Deep Silver has it for like <laughs> leave it in the past uh, or something. I don't know. The only thing uh, that was yeah. ever good about Dead Island was that initial first trailer where it was in reverse. That was the one good thing that sold everyone on the game, and it was a lie. Uh, that game is such trash. <laughs> it is so awful. Sakon 10 says to all, why aren't you a fan of fighting games? Because huh? I'm a fan. Because we I'm a fan. I'm a yeah. fan. I'm a fan. Sometimes like depends games. on the game. I suck at them, yeah. but I like fighting games. I like some fighting yeah. games. Depends on yeah. the fighting game. I, ain't that yeah, I, don't, I don't like I don't like seek them out. But if it's like there, yeah, I'll play it. All right. Then even if I get decent, then I'll go online and then realize I'm terrible and cry. <laughs> I've got a Tekken tag arcade board downstairs. I'm, I'm a big fighting game fan. Ooh. Listen, everyone yeah. thinks they're good at Smash until they go to a tournament. Like everyone thinks they're it's good true. at Smash until they yeah. play their friend. Yeah. Like everyone in the ride is like, oh, I'm the best Smash player. I'm like, no, you get wrecked instantly fighting someone else. Oh, I, I just know I'm not good. I'll say it. I'm not good. It's bad. <laughs> and then uh, Brad says, passing on a bit of my Christmas bonus, someone get Jordan Sonic Mania. Hey, uh, on that I, got, now, right? I got to say something. Listen to this. Sonic uh -huh. Mania is good. One more time. Just one more time. Listen, I have Sonic Mania, all right? I got I got, <laughs> I got, got Sonic Mania. It's boring. All right, I said it. Oh, I said damn. it. I will die on the hill. Oh, I don't agree with oh, that. I will no. die on the hill. What? Damn, friend! Just because you're wearing my shirt, you don't have to drop takes Plus, like that. Here's here's it's the thing. It's a pretty game. I'm glad that it it actually was something like well received for the community. I'm just not a fan of Sonic games. Sue me. I don't care. You want to say something? See me at any convention. We'll discuss. <laughs> uh... What if Sonic comes over to you? Say, bring him over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go fans. Yeah, get out of my way. Oh no. <laughs> uh, well, I can just everyone in the comments right now. What? <laughs> They're just freaking out. Wait like, for the comments after the fact on the vod. God, God oh, forbid, I'm someone an opinion. Guy. Have some, have an opinion, have your own stance on something for once. Don't, com don't completely forget that Nate went off again on Sunshine. So like, <laughs> yeah. you're welcome, Nate. I'll take the blame on the last episode of the year. The I, decade. Can, uh, I, I also I, I had little Jimmy from Saskatchewan. <laughs> Saskatchewan. He's moving comments. around. He's got a military yeah, family. I guess we'll uh, I guess we'll end it with Jordan saying that Sonic Mania is boring. <laughs> I'm getting canceled now, guys. Okay. Apparently, okay. So dude, right before the decade, you're, you're going to be trending uh, on Twitter. Dude, yeah. hashtag can't, the Jordan is over party. Shut Finally, up, dude. Hashtag shut up, fringe. Hashtag shut up, fringe. Get it trending. Uh, There's three thousand of you almost. Figure okay. it out. Uh, th thanks to, uh, let me go around here. Rich, thanks for joining us tonight. Where can they, where can they find you, man? What do you got planned? You can find me over at Review Tech USA, and I'm going to actually be having a couple videos up tomorrow talking about Mike Matei and flops, terror flops. So. Oh, very nice, very nice. What about uh, MVG? Where can they find you, man? You can find me on Twitter at Modern Vintage G, YouTube Modern Vintage Gamer. I'm taking a little bit of a break on videos. I'll be back on January the 1st with uh, next video. So that'll be next Wednesday. So stick around for that. And thanks for having me on the show. Very cool. Very cool. What about uh, Nate? Find me on Twitter at Direct Feed Games. You can also find me on my other Twitter account, Nate the Hate, followed by the number two. I actually have some not hateful videos planned after the new year I want people to enjoy their holidays and not be consumed and corrupted by the Nate the hate brand like Jordan clearly has been <laughs> hey I'm I mean, in it baby I'm living the life right now uh, going out on a bang uh, literally what about Miss Click uh, thanks for having me yeah um, happy new year everybody thanks for, this is the last episode of the decade it's so sad um, but you can find me here for on sure. YouTube as Miss Click Gaming um, or you can find me on Twitch not tomorrow I'm off on Sundays but on Monday we'll be back uh, Miss Click underscore live I'll be there literally like every day so come hang out that's great cool. Cool. sounds good sounds good and then Jordan I don't know if you even want to find me at this point <laughs> But y'all can find me on the gaming channel. Oh, they Batteries want to find Low. you. Oh, they they don't find me, really don't find me on there. I've been working 
been taking a break because I've been working on an actual series of content for that channel. So oh, that'll yeah. be coming out next. Some plans year. for the, for that that channel. I got some big plans. I finally got inspiration. I've been writing. So if you want to go hate on me, there's the channel. Go hate on me. Man. That's fine. <laughs> hey man, engagements, engagement. There engagements, you go. engagements. Yeah, likes, yeah. dislikes. All do the same thing for you. We're Doesn't on matter. It. We're on it. We're on it. Uh, let me just double check before we uh, sign off here because I think there was a, a Streamlabs, and I want to make sure I don't I don't miss the message that may have been uh, <laughs> dropped on there. Um, Jordan, what do you got? What do you got coming up on your next on your channel? What do you got? Give it's, me one of the topics. It's not. I'll just say I'm working on. You're right. I should at this point. Uh, no, but I have a. I don't want to say what it is because it's a big project, but it's finally doing the thing with dante's inferno i've been talking about for a while behind the scene so something dante inferno related why because it'll be almost a decade old okay that here's a is good this is uh this is actually a question from uh Soldaben saying could sony use path retracing instead of rtx like cores yes they could but will they you think that'd be a way for them to to make it a bit cheaper as well MVG. just kind of it, work that out it's with possible with but then then it, it puts a load back onto the cpu so then That's what, what does that about. mean you know yeah. okay that would be so taxing on the hardware and be make limitation yeah uh, i'd be interesting I, i'm telling I mean, maybe sony really has something they're cooking up for that idea. yeah and i mean i guess it's an interesting question because we don't really know what the ray tracing solution will is. be yeah we don't even know what it is so it could just be some type of path tracing you know methodology that's that's hardware accelerated i mean we, we don't know what it's going to look like yeah so there's definitely that's why more ces ces is important people watch ces for amd you see what they're uh what they're what they're going to do to to do ray tracing mm. so cool yep. all right uh that should be uh everything there thanks to everyone for tuning in had a lot of fun tonight rich once again thanks for joining us Thank and you. we'll see you guys uh next next saturday night we'll be back for the first yeah, next year. episode of Woo! the yeah next year of the of the new decade so i think i think starting 2020 is gonna be a lot of fun and uh we'll see you guys then have a good you know one, guys